at all? And, and are conditions very different from normal? Well, this is a really, really good question, Rob. Uh, and welcome back, you all. Uh, here we are from the finishing tower on Lake Varese. Uh, this morning we had pretty good time, but not as fast as in the previous days. So uh, definitely warm water and perfect condition, but not as fast as they were in the previous days uh, where other crews went uh, super, super fast. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that uh, one of the best parts uh, was the junior women's eight, uh, men's eight. You know, the big boats uh, are always stunning. Yeah, they're impressive. How was your lunch? You were, you were rather busy, weren't you, running around doing some social media work with uh, Colleen, our uh, commentator up at 1,000 metres? I think we, uh, I think we were, but it was a great fun. Uh, we had the opportunity to jump on uh, word drawing, uh, and uh, we did a live on Insta involving all the athletes at the ballpark uh, and uh, parents, and we've also bumped into a uh, few coaches. That uh, was the way. We had the opportunity to talk to them, uh, interviewing them, but also sort of uh, getting the feeling of being here on Lake Fraser. Yeah, lovely. So you've done a lot of this. So Facebook, I'm, I'm hoping to find that on, on Catch Up and get that on, on Facebook or in Instagram, hopefully. We'll be on Instagram, so everyone can sort of jump on the official social media of word drawing and, of course, uh, look into it because, as we were saying uh, in the previous day, this is a wonderful event also for social media, right? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the semi-finals of the under 23 lightweight women's single skulls. Ed ora ci siamo davvero, si parte, si vola le semifinali del singolo pesi leggeri femminile, la prima in programma. In lane one representing Algeria, Nihed Benchadli. Lane two, representing Great Britain, Olivia Bates. In lane three, from Italy, Giulia Clerici. Lane four, from Greece, Evangelia Anastasia Du. Lane five, from the Netherlands, Phaedra van der Molen. And lane six, representing Slovenia, Ruby Chop. Algeria in acqua uno, Gran Bretagna in acqua due. So they are underway in the first of the semi-finals in the lightweight women's single skulls. Algeria, Great Britain, Italy, Greece, Netherlands, Slovenia. Ci siamo davvero, è partito ufficialmente questa prima semifinale del nostro pomeriggio. Entriamo nel vivo con uh, il programma Under 23. Algeria, Gran Bretagna, Italia, Grecia, Olanda e Slovenia. E ovviamente giocando in casa non posso che dirvi che Giulia Clerici è partita fortissimo. Lei che insieme all'Olanda si sta contendendo lo scettro, la prima posizione. Le prime tre garantiranno l'accesso in finale A, Olanda e Italia in questo momento a condurre. 
So the prize for the first three across the line in each of these semi-finals is, of course, a place in the A final and the chance to win medals. Uh, the remaining crews who finish outside the top three will make the B final, and that will give them their overall ranking as well. So every position is important and every position is worth fighting for. Our commentators are back out on the course waiting to speak to us. We have Andrea Proske, we have Thomas Cadet, we have Tim Van Fleet. We'll be joined by Neve Hayes again a little later on this afternoon. But uh, let's uh, head straight over right now and rejoin Colin Saville, who had a very busy lunch with Luca on that old um, <laughs> Facebook thing. Luke and I had a fantastic lunch, and it was a busy lunch, uh, not just because we had the opportunity to talk to so many athletes, coaches, supporters, friends, families, Mr. Felipe himself, uh, which was quite an honor, but also because we were stopped maybe by every other person who wanted to talk to Luca. Uh, so yes, we had a, a fantastic lunch, and it was a pleasure really to see everyone in the boat park. We open up the afternoon program with the under-23 lightweight women's skulls, Rob as you told us, it is semi-final A, B, and it's three to advance on uh, to the, the A final. So it's a last chance for these athletes to get in there. And at the moment, making the best of it in those top three spots. Well, it's Greece, the Netherlands, uh, and a really, really close Italy, followed by Great Britain, Algeria, then back to Slovenia. Ritorniamo nuovamente in contatto anche dalla postazione ai mille metri del percorso per questo pomeriggio della quarta giornata di gare ai campionati del mondo di Varese 2022. Siamo con la prima semifinale per andare a vedere chi riuscirà ad acciuffare le posizioni utili per il passaggio del turno in finale A con un'Olanda che è partita veramente forte, sembrava avere una marcia in più sulla partenza, ma la Grecia con Angelia Anastasiadu, lei che proprio nella giornata di ieri ha totalizzato un record mondiale con 7,24 e 59, si è portata avanti rispetto a tutte le altre atlete in gara. Con Giulia Clerici in corsia numero 3, due volte campionessa del mondo nel 2018 e nel 2019 in 4 con, già lo scorso anno seconda ai mondiali nella specialità del singolo, proprio questa in cui la vediamo protagonista oggi, quindi Grecia, Olanda, Italia per le prime tre posizioni, attenzione perché anche la Gran Bretagna non è sicuramente da meno. Approaching the halfway point and the story of the race thus far, well, it's the sculler from Greece, Evangelina Stasia Du, holding on to that first place position. She was first to the 500. She's looking really fluid as she moves through the halfway point. And then just behind her, well, as we know, top three to advance, and it's so tightly packed. It continues to be, well, it's no longer the Netherlands. It's local favorite, Giulia Clarici, uh, loads of talent. She won gold at the Euro under 23s back in 2021 in the women's double. We saw her at the under 23s last year where she took silver in this very event and she's managed to overhaul the Netherlands as they move through the third quarter. Con il tocco italiano di Gianni Postiglione, allenatore dell'atleta greca, vediamo che continua la corsa Evangelia Anastasiadu in solitaria in testa al gruppo con l'Olanda in seconda posizione e Giulia Clerici dell'Italia in terza, continua la corsa di questi tre equipaggi proiettati verso la finale A, gli altri pagano un po' lo scotto di una partenza fortissima vediamo se dovranno accontentarsi della finale B oppure partire all'aggancio dei primi classificati Viva Italia, Tim. Over to you for the first time this afternoon. Yeah, thanks uh, so much, uh, Colleen. Uh, it's, uh, uh, well, it's a good day to be an Italian uh, here with uh, uh, Giulia Clerici in one of the center lanes uh, moving into second position. And she's really putting some distance in uh, the uh, third spot. Uh, that's Feder van der Molen from the Netherlands in lane five, uh, who had to go through the repechage uh, to get here in this AB semi-final. So the center lanes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, those were the winners of the heats and the rest of the uh, competitors here had to contest the repechage but uh, yeah it's uh, Anastasiadou from Greece leading over Italy and then it's Netherlands and uh, Olivia Bates from uh, GB uh, looking uh, like a well she is trying to draw level in that black boat on the far side of the course and furiously rating it's very very high here in the single 35 strokes a minute uh, and that compared to the rest of the field is pretty high Andrea. Absolutely. I mean, I saw her bl blast out at a high rate and hold that consistently. I hope everyone on the banks has had, uh, hydrated because you are going to want to scream these athletes in this race. 
uh, Tim, packing about as much of a punch as a shot of Italian espresso. My heart rate is going right now. Uh, first through the line here, we do have the uh, Greece followed by Italy, followed by the Netherlands, but who's your pick? Ooh, I, I think Feder van der Mola. She has she's had some difficulty keeping it up all the way to the line. She is really quick out of the block. So I could I should keep my eye out on Olivia Bates from Great Britain from uh, Nottinghamshire County Rowing Club to maybe move through in the last part of this race. But uh, she has her work cut out because it's uh, still more than 10 meters separate separating the Netherlands and Great Britain. But uh, Clarici and, As and Anastasiadou from Italy and Greece in the lead. But uh, fantastic dominance performance from the uh, Greeks uh, young scholar there Rob to lead this race almost from start to finish they're closing in on your position how is it looking from where you're sitting she's making uh, quite a habit of this kind of performance isn't she and uh, she's so impressive Anastasia do she was the quickest by far of all these crews in the heats looking good for Greece at the moment and for Italy and for the Netherlands can Olivia Bates put a spurt on and get home uh, for team GB una grande finale, un gran finale, un'occasione per acciuffare ovviamente il posto che si vuole, ossia quello della finale A. Se al centro del percorso Giulia Clerici per l'Italia non vuole mollare all'esterno non possiamo che tenere gli occhi sulla Grecia. Una Grecia strabordante, una Grecia forte del record, messo in cassa forte durante le qualificazioni e quindi saranno Grecia, Italia, poi l'Olanda per le prime tre posizioni. Still a battle going on for that third and final qualification slot for the A final. But first home, it's Anastasia Du of Greece. She's through to the final, along with uh, Italy's uh, Giulia Clerici. And taking that third qualification spot is Van der Merlen of the Netherlands. So it's Greece, Italy, and the Netherlands through to the A final of the lightweight women's skulls. The remaining crews will contest the B final. So on to the second semi-final to see who will join those crews. It's Australia, Germany, Chile, Romania, Turkey and Argentina. Colleen. Yeah, it's a really good race for Turkey so far. That's Ilis Ozbe of Turkey. She was second only to Evangelina uh, uh, Anastasia Du, who we just saw win the prior round. And she was second uh, the entire way down at the course. That was heat one. Um, she's currently leading uh, this semifinal AB, looking for a spot in the A final, holding on at a cool 32 strokes per minute. And as they just come by the halfway point, well, the battle is on for second and third, as we look across the way, well, it's looking really good for the Chilean sculler. She's second to cross into the thousand, and it's Grace Cipher moving from third, uh, excuse me, a consistent at third, and maintaining that position uh, into the third quarter. Siamo con il seconda semifinale del singolo pesi leggeri femminile semifinale per andare a determinare sia i partenti della finale A sia quelli della finale B. Continua la corsa della Turchia con l'atleta Elis Ozbey che guida le file di questo gruppo di atlete, le sei impegnate in questa specialità e in questa semifinale con il Cile in seconda posizione. Attenzione all'Australia all'esterno che parte all'attacco insieme alla Germania per rientrare sulle imbarcazioni di testa. Continua la corsa comunque della Turchia in prima posizione con Cile, Germania e Austria in lotta per il passaggio del turno. 750 meters to go. Turkey continues to lead. But these qualification spots, we know there's three to go on. And Tim, there's three boats in contention for two spots. Yeah, I think uh, Osbey of Turkey has done enough to uh, uh, get that first position. If she just keeps this uh, up, she will be uh, fine uh, come the finish line. But uh, on the far side of the course, we can see three athletes from Australia, Germany and Chile uh, fighting it out for those last two spots straight into the A-final. Uh, and I think on the far side, look at the green and gold there from uh, Grace Cypher. She's really hammering along, isn't she? She sure is. I got a chance to talk to her coach. She says, country girl, tough as nails. <laughs> from Sydney Rowing Club, which I was told was the best rowing club in Australia, but I'm sure someone on the bank was going to disagree with me. But now is not for the meek as we see them come towards the thousand meters. Be brave, dig deep. Those legs must be burning. Who's first across the line? Let's take a look here together, Tim. 
Yeah, I think uh, still Osbey from Turkey uh, in front. And then uh, I think uh, Cosima Klotten from Germany from the Neusser Ruder Verein in second. But uh, I wouldn't be uh, calling it just yet for that last spot. Uh, I think Cypher from Australia was just in the lead at 1500. But uh, a resurgent uh, Isodora Niemeyer from Chile moving back into this and challenging for that last spot. So, with the uh, Turkish uh, scholar Osbey there, she's moving away even further, looking awfully relaxed for a semi-final. Uh, the race is on, Rob, on the far side of the lake. Certainly is. Uh, Osba is looking very dominant here, isn't she? But as so often is the case in these races, is the battle further behind her, which is the really intriguing one. Tutto può succedere in chiusura, ma se da un lato possiamo parlare di una Turchia dominante e di una Germania ormai quasi certa di passare, la terza posizione è quella che farà la differenza. Sarà l'Australia oppure il Cile in questo momento? L'Australia sta cercando di attaccare per provare a rientrare in acqua numero uno, quindi si complica la vita perché con quattro formazioni perso le tre posizioni uno prende il bagaglio e torna a casa quindi attenzione sarà fondamentale riuscire a passare ancora nuovamente il turno vanno ad aumentare il tifo gli atleti e ovviamente tutti gli spettatori con noi qui in tribuna Turchia, Germania, Australia, Cile che provano a rinvenire fa paura la Turchia attacca ancora la Germania con l'Australia ma il Cile is sempre vicinissimo attenzione well this is a thrilling finish yet again and the crowd really getting behind these crews as well first across the line is going to be uh, osbe of turkey great race from her dominant race but what about second and third second across the line is going to be clotten from germany and the third qualification spot the final one is just snatched by grace cypher of australia i think she just held off isadora and neymar of chile who put up such an amazing battle there let's just wait for a confirmation of that we know that ellis osbey took first place and karima clotten of germany taking second and confirmed grace cypher of australia is into the final with that terrific finish a very bad luck for Nimaya of uh, Chile and she and the remaining athletes will be through to contest the B final We're already underway in the first semi-final of the lightweight men's single skulls with Canada, Austria, Denmark, Belgium, Argentina and the USA, which uh, is where Colleen will be focusing her attention. Yeah, it's exactly right. And uh, it looked brilliant as they moved through that halfway point and into the third 500. I love watching lightweight rowing. It's so often really tightly packed uh, since size is kind of a constant variable, more or less, uh, depending on height, of course. And these crews, well, tightly packed. They are really impressed in particular with the Argentinian scholar. That's Pedro Jose Kirk Dixon, who led uh, at the 500 point. He slipped back into the third um, at the 1,000. And up at the top of the field, well, that's Canada. So, Andrea, you'll be happy to see that. Oh, Canada. Here comes Stephen Harris, this year's World Indoor Championships bronze medalist. And I can see them all barreling down towards us. This is such an important part of the race here. Your legs are burning. You've probably done 1,500 meters many times before. But what do you have left in the tank for that full 2K? This is why semifinals so exciting, Tim, because there's nothing left to hold back. If you want a, a shot at that A medal mm. round, you've got to go now. Yeah, you've got to go now. And this is such a tough uh, race to be in the semifinals. There is... Well, there is something to gain, but there is also very much to, uh, much, uh, to lose because if you uh, don't make it into the top three, you're out of a chance of a medal. Whereas as you, if you're in the top two or uh, three, you keep your medal chances alive. It is uh, Canada leading still. It's Stephen Harris uh, in the lead on the far side of the course. But Thibaut Vivet from Belgium moving through and going with him. It is the uh, scholar from, I think that's the scholar right to his uh, left. That must be uh, Dixon from Argentina. 
Get on your feet. Here they come. They're barreling towards you, waiting for that opportunity. When those white buoys turn red, you know then there's only 250 meters left. And as we sit here, Tim, can you hear that crowd? Yeah, we can already hear the fans on the uh, on the bank shouting and screaming at the athletes racing this semi-final. Great to hear it from where we're sitting, but uh, the volume must be much louder from where you're sitting, Rob and Luca, uh, because you're in the thick of it in the final closing stages of the race. You you would think so, except we are surrounded by very thick glass, which does cut out quite a lot of the noise, which is why we've struggled to hear the cowbells in recent days. But we know they're there. We know the cheering is happening. Uh, what's happening out there, Luca? È una gara stratosferica, da un lato il Canada sta cercando di mantenere la propria posizione ma è pericoloso l'attacco che cerca di sferrare anche all'esterno l'atleta degli Stati Uniti con al centro il Belgio che prova a rinvenire quindi Canada e Belgio in questo momento per le prime due posizioni per la terza potrebbe essere l'Argentina che sta rinvenendo dal quinto posto quindi all'esterno Canada poi il Belgio e l'Argentina per le prime tre posizioni what a battle for the line. It's so close, this one. But uh, first place is going to go to Stephen Harris from Canada, or is it? I think it's just been put in, into second place by Thibaut Vive of, of Belgium. And the salute from lane five, uh, Pedro Dixon of Argentina, would indicate that he thinks he's got third place. I'm pretty sure he's got third place as well. So Thibaut Vive of Belgium ahead of Stephen Harris of Canada. And let's just await confirmation that Pedro Jose Kirk Dixon of Argentina has taken that third qualification spot for the A final. That's how we saw it up here in the tower, Luca. It was a great finish, I have to admit. Uh, Argentina from the fifth place all the way up. Uh, and yes, he did. So third spot uh, and qualified uh, to the A final, Argentina. Second semi-final, I wonder if this will be as tight between Germany, Switzerland, France, Uruguay, Uzbekistan, and Peru. They're looking very, very close at 1,000 meters, Colleen. Yeah, they're really tightly packed at 1,000, and a trip around the world with this one, as you'd say, Rob. It's looking great for the sculler from Switzerland, that's Gian Struzina, who leads the field by a good length or so. As they come by the halfway point, where we see the Uruguayan sculler just look over his right shoulder, that's Philippe Clou Luva Ferreira from Uruguay having a fantastic first thousand moving into the second half. So it's Switzerland, Uruguay, and then so tightly packed for third. I think I'm calling France at the moment. Seconda semifinale del singolo pesi leggeri maschile che vede Svizzera, Francia, Uruguay e Perù sulla stessa linea. Ancora una volta quattro imbarcazioni per tre posizioni valide in accesso alla finale A con Germania ed Uzbekistan che sono leggermente più arretrate in questa specialità in cui l'anno scorso vinse la Grecia, seconda l'Italia con il Storre e terza la Bulgaria. Continua la corsa degli equipaggi con il Perù insieme ad Uruguay, Francia e Svizzera per le prime quattro posizioni. And continues to be Switzerland up at the top. Uruguay pretty comfortably holding that second place position. Tim, it's getting really tight at the front of the pack though between France and Peru. Yeah, it's definitely uh, the Peruvian uh, scholar uh, Sandro Gardella Bozzo from uh, racing here in lane six, close to our commentary position, who is really having a well, he's moving along so very good. It's uh, smooth. It's l very nice uh, sculling, actually, to see. But all the way to his left, it's the Frenchman, uh, Martin Brouwer, in lane uh, in one of the center lanes, so winners of his heat, uh, who is struggling to uh, get to make that top three with Trutzina from Switzerland leading uh, together with uh, Kluver Ferreira from uh, Uruguay. That's the one, too. And then it's almost a full length back and a fantastic battle developing between France and Peru there.
Well, uh, Tim, I shouldn't have had a, had a cappuccino before. My legs are twitching underneath the table here in the commentary's desk as I will these athletes on. They are just absolutely driving those strong, powerful legs down, going, doing whatever they need to do, taking a look to their left. All these athletes in individual boats united by emotion as they surge towards the finish line. Man, these, this racing has been unbelievable. It's unbelievable, and it's tightening up even further as they come towards the Red Boy area. It's close between Strutina and Klufer Ferreira from Uruguay and Switzerland for first and second but the battle developing for that final remaining spot into the A final between Peru and France. That's the battle to watch, isn't it? Peru and France because uh, the front two look pretty assured of getting there, uh, not least Strutina who's uh, well in front here for Switzerland in lane two. Ovviamente in chiusura andremo ad ufficializzare questa marcia trionfale, una marcia trionfale perché Svizzera è riuscita da un lato insieme all'Uzbekistan a far la differenza ma la Svizzera lì al centro questo talento classe 2001, il 26 di luglio ha compiuto gli anni proprio due giorni fa, li ha festeggiati qui alla Schiranna ed ora cerca di andare a mantenere la sua posizione seppur insidiata ancora con attacchi forti decisi dall'Uruguay che sta cercando di accorciare il gap quindi Svizzera ed Uruguay per la terza posizione potrebbe rinvenire la Francia sulla Germania attenzione attenzione well attenzione attenzione indeed because it could be anybody's race here uh, for first and second and third of all first and cross the line is lane four it's Kluver Ferreira of Uruguay second is uh, Switzerland and in third place I think over in lane one was Max von Bülow of Germany and uh, well what a terrific race yet again here on the uh, fabulous Lake Varese. Uruguay, Switzerland, Germany into the A final to join Belgium, Canada and Argentina. We now have the semi-finals of the under-23 women's double skulls. The lineup: Denmark, Switzerland, Romania, Great Britain, Netherlands, and the USA. Colleen, it's all yours. Thanks very much, Rob. Uh, thrilled to tell you about how this race is developing. Romania out of lane three, currently making the best of it. They're the quickest moving boat on the course, up at 37 strokes per minute. Romania in the bow seat, Andre Andrada Maria Morsanu. Well, she's got a load of experience and certainly translating that to the water now. She uh, was in the A final last year in the under 23 women's quad. She has a bronze medal from the juniors back in 2019 in the quad. She's moved into the double and picked up her partner, partner Elula Liliana Balaluka, and they're making uh, just great strides into the third quarter of this race. It's Romania leading over to Switzerland and then a really close GB back to the U.S. and fourth. È la Romania a fare l'andatura lì al centro del percorso in corsia numero 3 battendo 37 colpi al minuto sulla Svizzera. Poi la Gran Bretagna e gli Stati Uniti in lotta per la terza ed ultima posizione utile per il passaggio del turno. Una gara serratissima anche questa, la prima semifinale del doppio femminile che vede quattro imbarcazioni di gran livello contendersi le posizioni della finale A. Sicuramente sarà una bellissima gara questa nella specialità che nel 2021 a Racice vide l'Olanda vincere, Olanda che in questa batteria però rimane un po' in sordina. Great Britain running third, their closest threat would be the United States, uh, but it's looking pretty solid for them to capture it, still 7.50 to go. Catherine George, well she took fifth in this event last year, Tim she's in the stroke seat now, I'm sure she'll want to be on the podium this year. Yeah, I bet she does, and uh, but she has a lot of work to do because she's trailing uh, the uh, the three leading crews now pretty severely. It's GB in third, and that's the crew to watch. So the Americans will have to take a big look to the left uh, and uh, come to the realization that they have almost 20 meters to make up. So uh, I suspect huge cheers from all the American uh, fans on the banks come the uh, finishing straight because GB seems to be walking away, but still Romania and Switzerland in first and second. GB in third but the Americans, they'll have to start sprinting soon though to get uh, back in contention.
And we know that this is the most important race of the year for these athletes. For many of them, a, a B final just isn't acceptable. They're going to pull everything out of the bag here. You can see them translating that power from the face of the oar right to the foot plate. A little bit of a couple of cheers here as the athletes encourage each other past the 500 meter mark, bringing out every ounce of power in the stroke. Yeah, and they'll have to and uh, raise the rate. And uh, America is still at 35 strokes a minute, where the uh, Romanians, uh, well, we know they're a high rating crew, but they're at 37, the Swiss 35. So I think GB, well, they have a very sm nice little smoothness to their style, but uh, I think GB is going to want to accelerate as well to keep out of that charge for the line, Rob. Yeah, indeed. It looks a little as if uh, USA have dropped off a, a touch there as they came through that last uh, timing mark. There was a bit of a gap opening up between GB and USA. That, remember, being the final qualification spot. But currently it's Romania from Switzerland, from Great Britain. La Romania, Romania ancora che riesce a regalare un altro colpo grosso nel doppio femminile ed è una dimostrazione che il lavoro alla fine paga sempre e lo dimostra ancora una volta anche in questa occasione la Romania, barche lunghe, barche corte, uomini, donne, punta coppia, cambiano tante op opzioni ma alla fine il risultato è sempre quello, una Romania arrembante davanti capace di andare a dominare e conquistare il mondo quindi Romania Gran Bretagna poi la Svizzera coming down to the closing straight I think it's all too late for the USA as Romania crossed the line in first place they held it all the way down to the finish it's Great Britain who've moved up to take second place what a finish from them and over in lane two Switzerland take the third qualification spot that last two you heard was the crew from the USA they missed just missed out on making it through to the A-Finals. So it's Romania, Great Britain and Switzerland who make it through to the final of the women's double skulls. Semi-final two of the women's doubles with Lithuania in lane one, South Africa in lane two. In lane three, France. Lane four, Canada. Italy in lane five. New Zealand in lane six. Colleen, how are they looking? Thanks very much, Rob. Yeah, they're looking really good as they move towards us. It's the Canadians currently in the lead. It's three to advance to final A. Last chance to get there. Canada at a cool 35 strokes per minute, stroked by Grace uh, Vanderbroek. Uh, and in the bow seat, Elisa Bollinger, following the rhythm that she's setting down ever so nicely. So Canada holding on to that first place position just behind them while it's France running second, then South Africa, Italy, um, over to Lithuania, then back to New Zealand. They're charging into the second half. Tengono testa il gruppo, le atlete canadesi che al passaggio ai mille metri del percorso hanno una imbarcazione esatta di vantaggio sulla Repubblica del Sudafrica e sulla Francia. Sono queste tre le imbarcazioni in vantaggio in questa seconda semifinale del doppio femminile per andare a completare la griglia di partenza della finalissima in questa specialità. In gara anche l'Italia con Matilde Barison, 15 titoli italiani conquistati in gara dopo la prima esperienza in due senza con Greta Schwarz conclusasi al quinto posto poi Josephine De Bella a capovoga già nel 2021 impegnata in questa specialità con Alice Gnatta si mettono insieme per questo duetto alla ricerca della finale A the top of the field, the top three, looking pretty settled. Of course, there's still time. Anything can change. Uh, the Italians, though, closest to grabbing one of those qualifying positions. I know, Tim, that there's a load of Italians in the grandstand. Do you think that'll help them? Yeah, the, the wall of noise of Lago di Varese will certainly come into action uh, when the Italian double passes uh, the uh, spectator area. And uh, they're really going to need it because uh, Italy in fourth position, very close to one of those spots into the A final, but it's been Canada's race all the way. And oh, Canada comes through true north strong, this absolutely imperious looking double. Uh, Grace Vanderbrook, six world rowing experiences, one youth Olympics uh, with her bow seat, also with U23 experience. They've tested their medal already at World Cup three, landing in the B final. And certainly it's showing on the race here, but expanding our view to the rest of the field. Ah, oh, man, I remember this pain, this unyielding voice in the back of your head saying, keep pushing, don't stop. It's 
It's never enough. They're down to the line. Canada across first. And then we have uh, Russia and then France. Pardon me, South Africa. Yeah, the South African uh, combination of Wesley and Williams, uh, they're racing in lane number two, have taken second position out of the hands of the French. Uh, but the French are moving. Oh la la, les Français. There they go, stepping <laughs> it up, stepping it up. The French moving, trying to put some more distance between them and the fast chasing Italians, still in fourth position with New Zealand and Lithuania in hot pursuit. Quite a gap opening up there, isn't there, between third and fourth. Italy, the host, I'm afraid, might be dropping out of this one. It's all about Canada, South Africa and France night right now with Canada, the dominant leaders. Il Canada che vuole andare a mettere le ali al campo di regata, trasformando l'imbarcazione in un aeroplano. E questa la parafrasi la storia del Canada nel doppio femminile che cerca in tutti i modi l'incorsia 4 di tenere salda la barra dritta. E pensate che bello potrebbe essere per Elisa Bollinger, atleta canadese che compirà gli anni il 6 agosto festeggiare con un successo importante. Ma ci sono anche Sud Africa e la Francia che vanno in modo arrembante davanti alle azzurre, ormai molto lontane. Solo un miracolo con 7 secondi da azzerare potrebbe riportare il 2 azzurro in corsa. Quindi la corsa resta tra Canada, Sud Africa e Francia che nelle prime tre posizioni salutano e se ne vanno in finale A. South Africa are really challenging for this top spot. They want to pip Canada to the post. Canada have led all the way down. They've spotted the challenge. Canada crossed the line first, ahead of South Africa in second. France hold on to third. They are through to the A final uh, to join Romania, Great Britain, and Switzerland. There is now a huge gap back to Italy, who were challenging for that third spot. Next across the line is, in fact, Lithuania. That who was for Italy shows you how far back they'd slipped. And in sixth place, New New Zealand. So those last three crews, uh, Lithuania, Italy, and New Zealand will contest the B final. But just to recap, Canada, South Africa, France, Romania, Great Britain, and Switzerland are the finalists for the women's double skulls. And now, dear Rob, it's time to move on. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I, thanks, thanks for drawing my attention, uh, Luca, that there's another race underway. It's another boat class. It is the men's double skulls. It's Great Britain. It's Germany. It's Ireland. It's Belgium. It's Uruguay. And it's the uh, Czech Republic. And it's Colleen. Where do you see the battle developing here, Colleen? It's an absolutely thrilling race. And the battle, to answer your question, well, it's happening truly <laughs> across lanes one through six. Uh, there's three to advance to final A. And it's looking great for this combination from Belgium. That's Aaron Andreas and uh, Tristan van der Busch of Belgium in the bow seat. They moved into the second half of the race, but I have to say I'm really impressed with this Irish crew. It's their international debut, Team Ireland, at 626.8. And would you have it, this crew from Belgium, well, they went 626.5 to win their heat. Si riconferma ancora una coppiata fortissima, quella del Belgio al centro del percorso che con 38 colpi di passo controlla gli avversari. In seconda posizione l'Irlanda, poi la Germania per le prime tre posizioni. Sembra già una gara decisa quando mancano ancora 800 metri al traguardo ma potrebbe rinvenire sia la Repubblica Ceca che la Gran Bretagna con l'Uruguay un po' più arretrata ma il Belgio c'è continua la corsa verso il traguardo in questa prima semifinale del doppio maschile. Una bellissima gara. Brian Kolsch of Team Ireland in the stroke seat kicks it up to 37, Tim. Yeah, and I'm really curious to see what this uh, fast-flying uh, Irish crew can do. They're sandwiched in between the uh, doubles from Germany and from Belgium. The Belgians still in the lead, Germany giving chase. Paul Kruger there in the stroke seat, setting a very nice, easy-to-follow rhythm there for Philipp Dosche there in the bow seat. Uh, but they are moving, uh, well, they're trying to move away from the Irish. The Irish really powering along. Great to see them. It's the real Grinta from the Irish, which I love to see, which all sees them drawing level with Germany. But Andrea, look at that fabulous double from the Belgians. Clear water ahead.
They make it look so easy, but I know how hard they're working. It's like a duck. Indeed. You can don't see the feet moving. They're absolutely flying through, but not leading, not letting up, pushing away from the field, letting Germany and Ireland trade punches as they come towards the 250. I mean, if you listen carefully, Tim, I think that you'll be able to hear all the supporters screaming at their laptops across the world as we watch this race come down to the final 250. Yeah, Team Ireland doing so well here this week and uh, it looks uh, like another place in, or perhaps even the first place in the A final, but either way, it's fantastic to see them racing here. I think they're moving through, uh, but uh, I think the Germans still holding them off with uh, about half a boat length, but uh, Belgium out in front, so one, two, three, seems secure unless disaster happens, Rob. Yeah, again, Ireland are taking centre stage, aren't they? We're, we're loving the focus on them because we've been so impressed with our neighbours from uh, Ireland and they are really powering through here. But it's Belgium out in front, then Germany, then Ireland, and then the Czech Republic are really trying to challenge for that third qualification spot. Exactly right. Uh con Belgio lì davanti a fare l'andatura, un vantaggio davvero preziosissimo e bella l'azione di questa coppiata, l'aveva già dimostrato con la Germania per la terza posizione, però è un'altra rembante Irlanda, quindi molto bene anche qui con Belgio, Germania e Irlanda senza indugio sul traguardo. It's Belgium who are coming down to take the line first and they do it by a good three or four lengths. Second place, let's see where this goes. It's going to be Germany over in lane two and they take it by three quarters of a length ahead of Ireland in lane three. Ireland are into the final. That fourth hooter there was for the Czech Republic. They'd had a great race but not quite able to catch up. Uh, then Great Britain coming home in lane one uh, and finally Uruguay. So it's Belgium, Germany and Ireland through to the A final of the men's double skulls. On to the second semi-final. They're around the 750 meter mark now with Australia in lane one. Host nation Italy in lane two. Switzerland have got lane three. France are in lane four. In lane five, it's Moldova. In lane six, it's Croatia. And uh, again, it looks like a really flat line at around 800 meters. Very, very little in it. We love this kind of racing, don't we, Colleen? Yeah, we love this kind of racing. And I'm absolutely thrilled to see this combination from Moldova. Mentioned that Luke and I had the opportunity to walk around during the lunch break to chat with some athletes, get a sense of the energy, the excitement. And we did. We talked to this combination in particular. So it's even uh, Ivan Korsunov in the stroke seat, setting the rhythm, Alexander Bulat in the bow seat and I just loved what they told us we said okay what's your race strategy what can you tell us and all they said was it's hard work well that hard work paying off as they lead c'è tensione per il pubblico italiano con gli occhi attenti sull'equipaggio in corsia numero due con l'accoppiata Tommaso Molinari che dai pesi leggeri è passato ai pesi pesanti e Andrea Licatalosi nel 2021 argento ai mondiali junior che in questo momento provano l'aggancio sulle tre imbarcazioni di testa ma a condurre sono ancora Repubblica di Moldavia, Francia e Svizzera per le prime tre posizioni. Ricordiamo i primi tre in finale A, gli altri dovranno accontentare della finale B, ma ancora 800 metri liberi di campo per provare ad andare all'attacco e riportarsi nelle posizioni utili per l'accesso alla finale A. The 1-2-3 at the 1000, Moldova, France, Switzerland, Italy in closest contention, Tim, to capture a qualifying spot. Yeah, Italy just uh, 10 meters or so back from uh, the uh, Swiss double uh, right beside them. Uh, but uh, Italy having a lot of work to do. If I look at the stroke rates, the Italians already up at 38 strokes a minute. And uh, usually that's not too good news if, you're, if you still have over 650 meters left to row. But uh, Andrea, I'm very pleasantly surprised by the uh, Moldovan double uh, racing very close to our commentary position in lane number five. They've really taken the initiative here in this uh, um, uh, semi-final. That's really brave stuff from them. Absolutely. They stepped up to the opportunity. As we know, it all doesn't matter what happened in the past races. It's about the here and now, the moment, leaving nothing on the water, emptying the tank. And that's what would be going through my head if I was in these athletes' seats right now. Deep breath, 
time to go to war. We hear a couple battle cries as they come towards the line. There's still overlap for everyone, including the Australian double of Harry and Woody. You can kind of see bow seat, take a look over, still in contention and be, being ready to do something really special here. So let's see how uh, the field closes up as we come towards the 250. Yeah, definitely closing up uh, with the Italians uh, reconnecting with the uh, stern of the Swiss double. I'm sure to hear some cowbells uh, any time now and uh, also some support from the, uh, uh, the French fan base at uh, 200 meters to go. They'll produce plenty of noise come the uh, Red Boy area. But uh, Moldova, really impressive, Rob, leading this uh, race and uh, looking good for a spot in the A final. Yeah, it looks almost assured, doesn't it, with France. And then is it going to be Switzerland or is it going to be Italy? Can they get some home support just to cheer them through maybe into that third spot? It looks really tough from here. Sarà difficile, sarà difficile, ma gli azzurri lotteranno vendendo cara la pelle. Considerato che a bordo di questa imbarcazione c'è anche un ex peso leggero, una media barca che sarà di 80 kg, stanno gareggiando coi giganti. La Moldavia in questo momento continua a fare l'andatura, probabilmente l'intervista Miedi Colin ha portato fortuna, dovremo farla anche prima della finale. Ed eccoli qua davanti, un vantaggio assoluto su Francia e Svizzera cercano ancora di rientrare gli azzurri che all'esterno devono dare fondo alle energie e la Schiranna può far la differenza urlando forza azzurri we've got something happening here absolutely extraordinary Moldova are going to cross the line in first place and Italy are fighting and fighting they got their bow into second place but I don't think they managed to sustain it through the finish line. Republic of Moldova took the first spot ahead of France in second. Did Italy manage to get in there ahead of Switzerland? They were briefly in second. I don't think they did. Switzerland battled back. They took that third spot. It's Moldova, France, and Switzerland through to the A final of the men's double skulls, along with Belgium, Germany, and Ireland. Desperately bad luck for Italy. Australia and Croatia, uh, well, they'll be in the B final. Quei 30 centesimi che bruciano tantissimo, vittoria della Moldavia, secondo posto la Francia, terza la Svizzera, quarta l'Italia. We now move on to the under-23 men's quadruple skulls. It's Spain in lane one, Poland in two, Italy are in lane three with New Zealand alongside in lane four, Argentina taking up lane five, Lithuania in lane six. It's going to be another close battle here if we're looking at the uh, 800 meters or so, if that's got any judgment on how it's going to progress further down the course, Colleen. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And I'm wondering, uh, although the Italian crew we just heard didn't quite advance, if they've sent some energy up the field to their teammates because this Italian combination just looking fantastic first to cross through the halfway point with clear water over the rest of the field. So it's Italy, Matteo Sartori in the three seat, Leonardo Teltoldi in the two seat. They were uh, last year at the under 23 championships and in this very event took the silver. They'll be running for the gold this year, I'm sure. Hanno energia in corpo gli atleti italiani, sembra che abbiano caricato le pile prima di partire per questa semifinale del 4 di coppia maschile. Andrea Pazzagli però il capovoga e richiama i suoi, Matteo Sartori, Leonardo Tedoldi e Nicolò Bizzozzero per partire in volata in chiusura in questa specialità perché Lituania, Polonia e Nuova Zelanda tentano il tutto e per tutto per rimanere nelle posizioni di testa. Perdono terreno invece la Spagna e l'Argentina quando ormai mancano 700 metri al traguardo. L'Italia c'è ancora una volta. Tim, they're charging towards you. Italy in the lead. Can you help sort out the rest of the remaining crews for us? Yeah, I'll, t I'll give it a good try, uh, Colleen. It's uh, Italy, as you mentioned, in front and uh, really dominating this race. It's uh, so impressive to see. I'm sure Luca will tell us more about them in a couple of moments uh, with uh, New Zealand uh, clinching second position. Uh, and then it's really tied between Poland and Lithuania right behind the crew from New Zealand for, those last, uh, for that last position into the A-final. So uh, we don't know for sure with, uh, who our three uh, A-finalists uh, from this semi-final will be but I think the Italians have their hand have one foot in that a final New Zealand in second position and the, and the Lithuanians flying past our commentary position moving into third
Yeah, don't blink, you'll miss them here. The quad is one of my favorite boats. Such gritty determination on the faces of the athletes. They're pulling hard for themselves, for their teammates, for their countries, knowing that it's all on the line with only three, two, absolutely unyielding though in Italy still in front. Yeah, Italy 1, New Zealand 2, Lithuania moving into third, but uh, can uh, Cesare Litka from Poland uh, put on the afterburners and move past Lithuania in the closing stages? That's the big question, Rob. I'll leave the answer up to you. <laughs> Thanks. No, I think only Poland have the answer to that one, but uh, aren't Italy looking good here? And uh, we needed that from the host nation. They've had a couple of disappointing results, but this is looking good for them. They're leading the way ahead of New Zealand, and right now Lithuania in that third qualification spot for the A final. Una marcia trionfale, una cavalcata dominante, una cavalcata che permette agli azzurri di sognare in grande, anzi in grandissimo, è eccezionale il capovoga Andrea Pazzagli che guida gli azzurri verso il traguardo con grande concentrazione e lì dietro di lui Matteo Sartori, Leonardo Tedoldi e Nicolò Bizzozzero mettono luce e volano alla vittoria davanti a Nuova Zelanda e Lituania. Italy crossed the line in first place, ahead of New Zealand in second, third. Whoa, Luca, help me here. Which country got third? Was it Poland or was it Lithuania? It's too hard to say right now. <laughs> That's no good. That's not the kind of help I expect from my host and dear friend. But anyway, it has gone the way of Lithuania. They just came through here on the near side in lane six. So it's Italy, New Zealand and Lithuania who go through to the A final of the men's quad skulls. Desperate bad luck for Poland. Terrific effort from them. They, Spain and Argentina will contest the B final. Second semi-final of the men's quad skulls, the last three positions in the A final app for grabs from the USA in one, Netherlands in two, Germany in three, Great Britain in lane four, the Czech Republic in lane five, Chile near side in lane six. Una seconda semifinale tutta da vivere dopo aver seguito il trionfo del 4 di coppia azzurro con Nuova Zelanda e Lituania. Chi raggiungerà queste tre nazioni? Stati Uniti, Olanda, Germania, Gran Bretagna, Repubblica Ceca e all'esterno il Cile. Ce lo faremo dire dal campo di regata over to Colleen. Yeah, thanks very much, Luca. Over to me is, I think, what you said, and if not, uh, I'm going to take it anyway because it's an absolutely exciting race that's developing mid-second quarter, approaching the halfway mark. You might remember from the prior round, well, Great Britain just had a fantastic heat. They dominated uh, in their heat with Argentina in that round, taking the second qualifying space They've come back into semifinal A, B, and they're doing just the same up at 37 strokes per minute. It's Miles Devaru in the stroke seat for GB, laying down uh, what's now first across into the second half. Germany in a close second, and then your pick for third. Una spettacolare azione da parte della Gran Bretagna in corsia numero 4 che continua la corsa verso il traguardo, tallonato dalla Germania, partito in corsia numero 3 che palata dopo palata cerca di guadagnare margine di vantaggio con in terza posizione la Repubblica Ceca che nel 2021 fu d'oro sul campo di regata di Racice ma solo Daniel Nosek si trova ancora a bordo, solamente il capovoga, gli altri atleti sono tutti nuovi di pacca in questa imbarcazione con la seconda semifinale del quadruplo maschile che vede la Gran Bretagna veramente in grande spolvero. Attenzione perché la Germania palata dopo palata gli si fa sempre più sotto con la Repubblica Ceca in terza posizione. GB leading, Germany holding the second qualifying position and on the move, the Czech Republic able to edge themselves just a bit away from the Netherlands. Tim, Daniel Nosek in the stroke seat of the Czech Republic. Well, he's from the gold winning crew from last year, the defending champ. Certainly he'll look to kick it up to make sure they get that spot. Yeah, we saw the uh, crew from the Czech Republic uh, moving really well in the final quarter. That was really their area of expertise uh, with uh, the two front runners at this stage. I think the Germans are moving through Great Britain. 500 meters left to go. It looks good. Germans have the initiative and the higher boat speed. And uh, I think they have their canvas ahead of GB right now. Clear skies, but here comes the storm. Lightning quick blades coming towards us, thundering absolutely through the thousand. Uh, thousand. 
Uh, auf die Beine, los geht's, Jungs, as Germany goes through first, but it is so close here, and I can see a call here from the uh, Czech team. They're not letting it go easily, Tim. No, I think they, uh, they looked to their left and saw the Dutch crew uh, already sprinting 40 strokes a minute there, coming off the uh, stroke seat there. Willem Stope, uh, he's really taking his crew for a fantastic ride into the final uh, 250, and the Czechs have to respond because the Dutch currently in third position, and that's going to be a major upset if the uh, Czech Republic not, not making the A final. Yeah, Germany, Great Britain, Czech Republic, that's the order in the uh, front three, followed by the Netherlands, USA and Chile. How is that going to develop? How is that going to change here in this final few meters or so? Ovviamente il quadruplo è una barca veloce, una barca che ti toglie il fiato strizzandoti la gola e la Germania con la Gran Bretagna lo stanno facendo benissimo insieme alla Repubblica Ceca ma attenzione perché tra i due litiganti spesso è il terzo a godere, l'Olanda sta attaccando fortissimo quando siamo in chiusura. Coming down to the finish line, it's going to be mighty tough to call this one, but it's going to be Germany across the line in first place. Second place is going to go to the Czech Republic. They hold on. And third place out in lane two. It's gone the way of the Netherlands. So what a finish. What a race. What excitement. Terrific race yet again. Germany, Czech Republic, the Netherlands. Those are the three crews through to the semi, uh, through to the final, I beg your pardon, the men's quad skulls, where they'll meet Italy, New Zealand, and Lithuania. Let's just be a short pause now, ladies and gentlemen, before the next race, number 162 on your song sheets, and that is the semi-final of the under-23 men's pair, which will be getting underway at 3 o'clock local time. That's in about eight minutes from now. Ed ora? Quasi non ci posso credere. Eh? Abbiamo un attimo di pausa, un attimo di pausa prima della ripartenza, alle ore 15.00. Partiremo alle 15.00 con... Uh, la semifinale del 2 senza under 23 maschile, gustatevi questi 7 minuti, ci risentiamo a brevissimo, sempre qui. Qualcuno diceva stessa spiaggia, stesso mare, no? Potrei usare lo stesso? Dai, ci vediamo qui. Stessa spiaggia, stesso mare, tra 7 minuti da ora.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're underway once again with the semi-finals of the Under-23 Men's Bear. Ed ora ritorniamo in gara, siamo con la partenza ufficiale del 2 senza maschile. The line-up in Heat 1, semi-final 1. Lane 1 is Hungary, Dominic Patrick Konsik and Tamas Juhasz. Lane 2, Greece. Demetrius and Zizis Bukovalas. In lane three, Lithuania, Dovidis and Domantas Stankunas. Lane four, Canada, Julian Black and Joel Cullen. Lane five, Romania, Andre Mandrila, Claudio Neamtu. And lane six, France, Matthias Meriguet, Emmanuel Mathieu. A lottare per le prime tre posizioni l'accesso in finale A saranno Ungheria, Grecia, Lituania, Canada, Romania e Francia. Noi siamo pronti, loro saranno pronti? Dramatic music for dramatic racing and how is the drama unfolding Colleen? Yeah, the drama is unfolding. Uh, it certainly is. It's Lithuania currently uh, leading this race. Lithuania's uh, brothers, the twins, uh, Dovidas and Domantas Stankunas, whom we saw in the last round lead quite comfortably. That was heat one of the men's pair. They won silver at the 2021 World Rowing Under-23 Championships. They're clearly hoping to go one better this year, and they're out to make a statement. As I say that, though, it's, well, the field is so tightly packed. Canada gets their bow ahead for the first time to cross uh, the 500-meter mark first. 
Una Lituania che è partita veramente forte, due gemelli con un sincro veramente spettacolare, questi atleti che probabilmente hanno più esperienza degli altri in gara, infatti entrambi nati il 10 gennaio del 2000, mentre tutti gli altri equipaggi hanno atleti molto più giovani in gara. Un bellissimo assieme è quello dei gemelli lituani che precedono il Canada, ma il Canada in questo momento passa in vantaggio proprio sul passaggio ai 1350 metri del percorso per la terza posizione poi la Romania ricordiamo le prime tre in finale A le altre in finale B quindi è lotta contrastata tra tutte le imbarcazioni Lithuania's Stakunis brothers may have won the first heat but Canada's Julian Black and Joel Cullen won their heat leading from the start to the finish uh, with a comfortable win ahead of Croatia in the prior round so certainly a bit of a battle happening up at the front testing race tactics race strategies and of course these athletes so fiercely competitive that even if they know they're in a really good position to advance they will race all the way down to the wire that's what we're seeing up at the front It's now Lithuania leading Canada and the battle for third happening just behind them. At the moment, that's Romania. So Andre Medrila in the bow seat. Claudiu Nimtu setting the rhythm in the stroke seat. Look out though, because France challenging that for them qualifying position. Proprio in questo momento il passaggio delle imbarcazioni sulla linea dei mille metri di gara, metà percorso per tutti con la Lituania che non voleva veramente arrivare seconda, il Canada era partito all'attacco e gli era passato davanti ma la Lituania palata dopo palata incrementando il numero dei colpi e a 35 in questo momento il capovoga con una seconda voga che lo segue perfettamente, bella l'azione del due senza maschile lituano con il Canada in seconda posizione, per la terza la Romania, bella l'azione anche della Francia in corsia numero 6 che potrebbe tentare il tutto e per tutto per rientrare nelle prime tre posizioni utili per il passaggio alla finale A. France currently in the hot seat, ooh la la Tim, Ken Emmanuel Mattu in the stroke seat, kick it up to take them to third. I think so, Colleen. There definitely, uh, there's definitely still a chance of the French uh, pair making amends and getting into the top three and a spot into the A final. Uh, they have about five meters to make up to Romania now in uh, third position, but it's basically level neem. It's fantastic to watch Lithuania and Canada out in front here on Lago di Varese, going stroke for stroke, uh, matching each other for speed and almost for rate. I think the Canadians just underrating them, but uh, yeah. It looks fantastic out in front and France now making a small move, trying to encroach that uh, Romanian lead over them, but uh, the Romanians trying to get themselves more safely into the A-final. So all crews stepping up, 550 meters still left to go. Uh, Lithuania now moving away slightly, but it's just two meters separating Lithuania and Canada at the front of the field. So good to be back out here, Tim, watching this one. An exciting race. Very little between those uh, crews out there. Look at Romania go here in lane five, close to us. They are not too far out of those leading boats. There is very little at the moment separating Lithuania, Canada and Romania. You can see their boat speeds at the moment. Lithuania holding on to that fastest spot. I wonder the fact that they're twins, they know each other very well and they're very comfortable with each other. Will that help them today? Uh, it will definitely help uh, knowing your uh, pairs partner inside out, knowing everything you need to know. And uh, the Stankunas twins there from Lithuania now getting their baubles further in front of Canada. Canada now in the danger zone, slipping back slightly. Romania moving through, uh, closing the gap. France also stepping it up and watch the Greek crew as well, already at 38 strokes a minute and with a very nicely, a nice high boat speed. So it's uh, closing up at the front of the field, Rob, uh, but Lithuania looking very strong, dominating this last part of the race. They certainly are, aren't they, as they were earlier on, but I think France have dropped back. I think Greece have come through the French crew. They're now challenging for that third spot which is currently hosted by Romania it's Lithuania Canada Romania Una gara apertissima con la Romania che potrebbe rientrare conosciamo il loro valore e gli ultimi 250 metri si aggancia benissimo il Canada all'esterno la Lituania in grande pericolo la Romania allunga ancora la propria palata trasformando l'imbarcazione in una vera proiettile Romania lì davanti 
Coming up to the line, Lithuania are going to be beaten. They go into second place. What a finish there from the crew from Romania. We've seen this before from them. They are so strong. And second place, third place goes to Canada. What well, a terrific finish. But uh, Greece not able to quite make up the difference. Uh, France falling back and then Hungary. But it's uh, Romania from Lithuania and Canada who go through to the A final of the under-23 men's pair. Second semi-final of the under-23 men's bears is Germany in lane one, USA in two, Uruguay in three, South Africa taking up lane four alongside Croatia in five. In lane six, it's Great Britain. Colleen? Another, another tight race. God, we've had some excitement down this end of the course. Yeah, it's a fantastic sight to see Rob at the thousand as they're closing in, uh, finishing out the second quarter, preparing for the second half of the race. Well, in the prior round, the third and final heat saw a fantastic contest between South Africa and the combination from Greece, whom we just saw cross through the line. Greece contested in the repechage, uh, but South Africa was able to direct, uh, directly qualify and currently as we look across the field, while well, they're leading this race, the quickest moving boat at the on the course at a cool 36 strokes per minute. Una specialità, quella del due senza maschile, in cui serve affiatamento, precisione, sincronia. Solo così il Sudafrica sta riuscendo a tenere testa a tutto il resto del gruppo in questa seconda semifinale con una posizione per la prima con il secondo posto e il terzo posto veramente molti combattuti, cinque imbarcazioni sulla stessa linea, Germania, Stati Uniti d'America, Uruguay, Croazia e Gran Bretagna giocano al gatto e la volpe, si rincorrono sul campo di regata della Schiranna di Varese per andare alla conquista delle prime tre posizioni utili per il passaggio del turno alla finale A. È una gara veramente combattutissima sul fino di lana, solo sul traguardo si riuscirà a capire chi potrà avere la meglio. South Africa looking absolutely incredible up at the top of the field, but the battle for those remaining two qualifying positions, when I say that it is tight if you are in the Grand stands and walking around the venue this is one that you'll want to see tim yeah and the banks are packed colleen so it's uh we're gonna have some shouting and some encouragement coming from the banks uh, anytime soon uh but uh, it's i'm amazed by that uh, that pair from uh, south africa they've really shot out of the blocks like a rocket clear water ahead of the rest of the field it's incredible to see that this amount of class with 500 meters to go they look really comfortable ahead 35 strokes a minute whilst behind them there are already crews up at 40 gb and croatia tracking that uh, bow of uh, south africa very closely with uh, the uh, gb crew now trying to get back in contention they have a great boat speed it's uh, Oliver Parrish and uh, Luca Ferraro, the uh, stroke and bow of the Cambridge Blue Boat from last year. Uh, they are, oh, it's not, I can't make my mind up. I think uh, GB in second position with the Lunkaric twins from Croatia in third, but it's uh, very close with the USA and Uruguay still in contention. Look at this for a spectacle. They just passed us here in the hot, amazing race here. Three boats going through to the A final. And it is anyone's game between Croatia, Great Britain, Germany, USA. They are all in it. it, it I, I can't call it, but I do know that I, as I came up there a few minutes ago, the supporters down at the clubhouse, particularly I saw the Croatians screaming. I saw the GB flag out there. I know they are going to be shouting right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all of these athletes need uh, all the encouragement they can get from the bank uh, because it's going down to the wire. Still, GB, I think GB moving up with uh, Uruguay, but... Uh, Rob, it's fantastic to have a, a semi-final this close. No, oh, it really is. I wonder what the final's going to be like. Indeed, who is going to be in the final? South Africa, Great Britain, Croatia currently in pole position. Una di quelle gare che ti tiene incollati fino all'ultimo centimetro. Chi sarà in finale? Ovviamente la palla di cristallo noi non ce l'abbiamo. Se il Sudafrica da un lato continua ad allungare, dall'altro la Croazia sta accendendo il motore posizionato sotto il proprio scafo insieme alla Gran Bretagna e ancora l'Uruguay.
Well, this is going to be a tough one to call, but first place is going to be easy to call. It is South Africa who crossed the line in first place. Second place is going to go all the way to Uruguay and sealing that third spot. It is Great Britain in lane six. What a terrific finish from those three crews. They just managed to open it up just when it really mattered. South Africa, Uruguay, Great Britain will join Romania, Romania Lithuania and Canada in the final of the men's pair of the remaining Cruise contest the B final. We're on to our last semi final then of today. It's the under 23 lightweight men's double skulls. Cambiamo ora specialità entrando e introducendo quelle che sono le ultime semifinali di giornata. Il doppio pesi leggeri maschile. Uh, this is the lineup in semi final one in lane one. It's the USA, lane two, Hungary, Italy in lane three, Netherlands four, Spain in five, Brazil in six. Colleen, it's all yours. <laughs> Attenzione, Team Italia. We have Italy <laughs> leading out of lane three and doing it in style. Uh, quickest moving boat on the course, up at 39 strokes per minute. It's Giulio Asarnese in the stroke seat, Giovanni Borgonovo in the bow seat. They took bronze in the under-23 lightweight men's quad last year at the under-23 World Rowing Championships uh, and fantastic to see them out currently leading this uh, lightweight men's double skull semifinal AB. Italiani presenti alla schiranna di Varese, siete pronti ad urlare a squarciagola Forza Italia, perché l'Italia c'è ancora una volta al passaggio ai mille metri, è più di un'imbarcazione di vantaggio sull'Olanda, poi la Spagna per la terza posizione, una copiata italiana veramente di grande rilievo, Giovanni Borgonovo, atleta della Canotieri Cernobbio, già terzo nel quattro di coppia pesi leggeri nell'anno 2021, insieme a Giulio e Cernese, il capoboga, atleta del circolo Canotieri Roma. Ma sul tetto più alto del mondo già nell'anno 2019 nella specialità del 4 di coppia siamo agli ultimi 800 metri di gara e l'Italia continua ad allungare c'è sempre di più l'Italia con l'Olanda in seconda posizione poi la Spagna in terza una gara combattutissima per la seconda e terza posizione quando ormai mancano 650 metri al traguardo un'Italia che vola well, Italy is out in the lead, but just behind them. Well, the battle for second, we know it's three to advance, but there's still a battle for that second place position. Tim, what can you tell us about that? Well, the, uh, the Spanish in lane number five are really impressing me at this stage because I would expect the heat winners from the Netherlands to be or closer to Italy, actually. Italy looking, well, Fabulous. Uh, you can't fault them here. It's a typical Italian lightweight rowing uh, from our commentary position. Great to see high rate of striking with the Dutch uh, having a, a full on battle for second and third with Spain at this stage. And I think it's the group from Brazil in fourth. It is, as they just pass us here now at the 1500 meter mark. Italy now just going through, then a lovely battle here between the Netherlands and Spain. One of the Spanish rowers there, George Nab, first in the four last year in under 19. He is making the step up. He is making it look easy, though. Yeah, he's making it look really easy, and that's always a great uh, hallmark uh, for an e to uh, to have. It's a nice lever. It's uh, they move that body really nicely in synchronicity. Uh, so Antonio Dios Ramos and Jorge Knabe, they're from Spain. I think they are. They uh, they made their move at 1500, but the Dutch responding there, Hidalik Klema in the stroke seat uh, together with David van Velde, uh, they reacted and they have m put some distance, but not much, into the. Spanish, uh, so it's the Dutch currently in second position with uh, Spain in third. Brazil, worth keeping an eye on them in fourth. Can they do something here to upset the apple cart? But it's Italy leading the way ahead of the Netherlands and Spain. Un'Italia straordinaria, un'Italia capace di fare quello che ovviamente tutti i presenti alla Schiranna sognano, ossia vincere o comunque essere lì davanti a suonare la musica più bella con Giovanni Borgonovo della Canottieri Cernobbio, Giulio Cernese del Circolo Canottieri Roma che con grande padronanza fanno scappare anche le Germane le Papere qui sul lago di Varese, cercano di mettere luce e mantenere questo margine incredibile su Olanda e Spagna per seconda e terza posizione. 
Italy come down to cross the line in first place. They take it ahead of the Netherlands in second, a length behind, and then half a length behind them to take that third and last qualification spot is the team from Spain. So the other crew trying to make up a bit of ground there. Brazil in lane six, just unable to do so. Great finish, great race from Italy. Netherlands sticking in there and Spain, they qualify for the A final of the men's double skulls, the lightweights. So the second and the last of the AB semi-finals again in the under-23 lightweight men's double skulls. Japan are in lane one alongside Ireland in lane two, France in three, Turkey in lane four, Belgium in lane five, Greece in lane six. What more could you ask for? Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Uh, not much more is the answer to your question. It's getting absolutely tight in the middle of the field in particular, uh, but truly all six boats across. So it's just three to advance on uh, to final A. And at the moment, we're keeping an eye on the crew from France, Turkey as well. Uh, Sefik Kakman stroking the shell for Turkey and his, uh, his partner in the bow seat. They've just managed to put their bow ahead for the first time over France, then back to... Ireland and a close Belgium in fourth. Un'altra semifinale molto interessante, la seconda del doppio pesi leggeri maschile che vede anche qui quattro imbarcazioni contendersi, le tre posizioni utili per il passaggio del turno alla finale A. Sembra spuntarla al passaggio ai millimetri del percorso in corsia numero 4 la Turchia, risponde la Francia in corsia numero 3 ma attacca il Belgio in corsia numero 5. Poi l'Irlanda che in acqua 2 anche lei non vuole lasciare nulla di intentato e parte all'attacco mentre Giappone e Grecia perdono terreno nei confronti delle imbarcazioni di testa e dovranno probabilmente accontentarsi dopo il taglio del traguardo della finale B. Ma ancora continua la corsa della Francia veramente in grande spolvero insieme a Turchia, Bergio ed Irlanda per andare ad acciuffare la posizione utile per presentarsi alla griglia di partenza nella finalissima di questa specialità. Turkey leads France running second Savette and Verga in the bow seat for France as they came through the thousand Mil Blumot from Belgium in the bow seat we saw him just look over his shoulder because Ireland well they've been able to get their bow ahead just barely of Belgium Tim yeah the Irish uh, doing uh, what we've uh, seen them don't uh, do before they really use that third quarter and uh, need to uh, make a mark and uh, get uh, their bow ball ahead but uh, Turkey and France the uh, direct qualifiers from the heat uh, still in the lead but uh, boy are those uh, boys in green flying across Lago di Varese. Of course they are, and I'm privileged again to get to see them and talk about them. Hugh Moore, Kieran Purdy, they're both representing Queen's University Belfast Boat Club. Young crew, they won their repetage in style the other day, and look at them go. Lovely speed there. In, in fact, they are the quickest boat on the water at this moment, currently sitting in second place. So Turkey in the lead, followed by Italy, sorry, Ireland, France, so great battle here. Of course, three boats going through to final A. Um, my money's on Ireland. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not surprised uh, then, Eve, to uh, hear that. But uh, it's still uh, uh, Hock and Kakmak from Turkey uh, leading this. And I think if you're in that French double, you need to keep an eye out for the very fast crew from Belgium, who are now trying to uh, charge through the field and uh, get uh, that uh, last spot into the A final where uh, the medals uh, are uh, awarded at the end of it. So Belgium there moving strongly, Turkey still in the lead and Ireland looking fabulous in, in second position. Oh, there's such joy, isn't there, with Ireland on the water and Eve in the commentary box. It's wonderful. Take her money, Tim, right now while you can. But it's Turkey, it's Ireland, it's Belgium. Dicevamo Turchia, Irlanda e Belgio, queste tre nazioni che cercano ovviamente di fare la voce grossa. Solo tre i posti disponibili. La Francia però nell'ultima frazione non era così lontana e questo ovviamente potrebbe riaprire i giochi. Nel frattempo il vantaggio della Turchia insieme all'Irlanda e al Belgio continuano a fare la parte del leone ma attenzione alla Francia che continua ad attaccare quattro contendenti per tre posizioni. Un altro arrivo a Cardiopalmo, un altro arrivo a arrivo che spiazzerà e soprattutto farà sorridere qualcuno. 
Well, this is going to be a really close one. Ireland, I think, have come through. Neve was absolutely right. Can they hold it down to the finish line? Not quite. Oh, listen to those hooters. Now I've got to work this out. I think first across the line might have been Turkey. They might have just taken it from Ireland in second. And I think France might have claimed third. But actually, now that they've gone through the line, there are four boats now in an absolutely straight line. That was so close to call. But this is how it's going. This is the official result. Turkey first. Ireland second, France in third. They go through to the final of the lightweight men's double skulls where they'll meet Italy, the Netherlands, and Spain. Well, a slight change of pace now as we move on to the CD semi-finals, starting with the under-23 lightweight women's single skulls. Cambiamo ora completamente il nostro programma perché iniziano le semifinali per le finali C e D, partendo nuovamente dal singolo leggero femminile. Contesting the first CD semi-final, Morocco in lane one, Thailand in two, Switzerland taking up lane three, alongside them at Denmark in lane four, Mexico in lane five. So just five crews here in this opening semi-final. Uh, the first three will make it through to the C final for placings 13 and onwards. Uh, the remaining will contest the D final. But this is a nicely contested race so far, Colleen. Yeah, nicely contested indeed as these athletes look to close out their second quarter uh, looking for that halfway point that thousand meter marker at the moment up at the top of the field of that's Aline Schweizer of Switzerland uh, at a cool 33 strokes per minute I love watching the Swiss skull uh, in particular in these small boats just really long strokes great suspension and that's exactly what Schweizer is doing and it's keeping her up at the top of the field just behind her she'll have a really good vantage point of exactly how the race is developing and she'll know that Denmark is her closest competitor. That's Reich Cox Nielsen out of lane four. Then it's over to Mexico and Thailand, then back to Morocco. Le imbarcazioni giungono in questo momento ai mille metri del percorso, altri mille per andare a completare la loro prova di semifinale per andare a aggiudicarsi la finale C oppure la finale D. Peccato per l'equipaggio del Marocco in corsia numero uno che dopo i primi 400 metri del percorso ha dovuto arrestare la sua corsa, speriamo non sia niente di grave. Continuano quindi solamente in quattro le imbarcazioni con Svizzera in prima posizione, poi Thailandia e Danimarca con Messico che è pronto all'aggancio. Una bellissima gara per la seconda e la terza posizione. Solo uno di questi quattro equipaggi dovrà accontentarsi della finale D, gli altri li rivedremo ai nastri di partenza della finale C. Four boats in contention for three spots to the C final. The C final determining positions 13 through 18. Denmark may be putting a bit of a push on to capture one of those spots comfortably, Tim. Yeah, it's uh, Nielsen uh, from Denmark. Uh, pretty close, actually. Just, uh, well, three quarters, perhaps two thirds of a length behind uh, Schweizer from uh, Switzerland, who has been leading this race from the start. And uh, she uh, looks uh, really comfortable ahead. 32 strokes a minute. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think a little push there coming from uh, the uh, Danish color with uh, Orgeda Nunes from Mexico. Uh, also may putting her bow ball in front, but uh, that's in front of uh, Krang Jan Jam from Thailand uh, on the far side so uh, it's uh, those three who look good to uh, progress to the C final uh, and the rest of the athletes are contending uh, the D final later this regatta but uh, yeah Schweitzer there she looks really calm doesn't she it's a very nice like it's a lovely pedal here at Lago di Varese it is so beautiful to watch. Yeah, um, the Danish scholar now is making a little bit of a push, but as we said, the top three going into that final C, and it is looking like those places are, um, f are filled at the moment. They're looking super comfortable now as they pass us. The single, I think, the single skull is an incredible boat to race. It can be a lonely place out there by yourself, but it's all about your mindset, and these ladies are strong, no doubt. 
Yeah, you, more than in any, any other boat, you need to be strong mentally as well. There's no crew made to, uh, to help you out, to motivate you. There's no cocks to lead you all the way down to the finish. You have to do it all by yourself. And that makes the single one of the toughest events out there. Uh, but uh, the three athletes from Switzerland, Denmark and Mexico now putting some distance in the scholar from Thailand uh, as they move towards the finish tower and the Red Boy area. I think uh, the Danish scholar actually taking the lead in the final uh, 250, perhaps even 300 meters of this race. Nielsen taking the lead uh, and she really wants to be sure she uh, gets uh, across the line first and takes one of those spots into the sea final, Rob. Yeah, I think she's pretty assured of doing that, whether it be first or second place, and let's not write off the Mexican either, or indeed the athlete from Thailand, Kara Jangjan, but she's got a bit of a work to do if she wants to get into that sea final. Avevamo visto un po' di disappunto da parte della Svizzera che era rimasta fuori appunto dalla grande corsa, quella che poi avrebbe potuto garantire l'accesso in finale A o B e quindi rimanendo fuori dalle semifinali per le finali A e B, ora è l'occasione del riscatto. Stiamo parlando della Svizzera che insieme a Danimarca e Messico continuano a fare l'andatura in questa frazione. Peccato davvero per il Marocco che ha deciso di alzare bandiera bianca in chiusura e in questo momento il sorpasso della Danimarca sulla Svizzera è essenziale. Well, the way it looks now coming through down to the line is the Danish athlete Nielsen has indeed broken through. She's going to win by clear water. That's a terrific race from her. Absolutely superb. But who is going to claim second and third? The Swiss athlete is going to just hold on to a second place. That's Schweitzer. And third place is going to go to Mexico. Uh, that's uh, Olies and Nunes. Terrific race from them. And uh, Kranjanjam of Thailand just missing out. She put up a great battle in these closing stages, just not quite enough. So it's Denmark, Switzerland, and it's Mexico who are through to the C final of the lightweight women's single skulls. Second semi-final making its way down the straight here. It's Finland in lane one with Uruguay in two, USA lane three, Japan are in lane four, Tunisia in a lane five. A very closely fought contest over the first thousand meters. Could be anybody's race this, Colleen. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And the story of the race is that Nicole Yarson from Uruguay has led the entire way. So she led at the 500 timing mark. She's the first to cross into the second half of the race, but she's in hot pursuit of Marine Kawasaki. Kawamura from Japan out of lane four. We see her just look over her shoulder, her right shoulder as she comes through to get a sense, to get a feel for where the competition lies. It's three to move on to the C final. Uruguay still leading just by a touch. Japan holding second and Sara Zamali of Tunisia holding third. Un'altra opportunità per questi equipaggi di solcare le acque del lago di Varese ancora una volta sentendo il sapore della finale. È vero che le prime tre imbarcazioni andranno solamente a conquistare la finale C, ma batte comunque forte il cuore dell'Uruguay che schiera un atleta di buon livello, prima in posizione in questa seconda semifinale del singolo pesi leggeri femminile con il Giappone, lì veramente molto vicina per la terza posizione lotta tra gli Stati Uniti d'America e la Tunisia, con la Finlandia che scivola in quinta posizione. Well, the one, two, three has remained the same. That means that Isabella Begley of the USA will need to go now. She took bronze last year at the under 23 championships in the lightweight women's quad. This is her chance to get into the C final, Tim. Yeah, and uh, it's the last chance uh, to do so. And uh, if you're an American or an American supporter, perhaps you uh, might uh, want to encourage uh, Isabella Begley uh, there from uh, Morristown, New Jersey, uh, because she is uh, over a length back in for one of those spots into the C final uh, with uh, still it's uh, Uruguay's uh, Nicole Yarzon in the lead. She's uh, comfortably ahead together with uh, Karamura from Japan, and uh, closer to us, I'm really impressed by uh, Zara Samaldi, uh, Neve. She's uh, really looking 
well, relaxed, nice and cool and calm and crisp. It's 30, 32 strokes a minute, uh, but she will be keeping their eye, her eye out for uh, the American scholar in lane, in, in lane three, wouldn't you think so? Of course she will be, but I think she's looking quite safe now as she passes us. Those one, two and three, they're looking very comfortable. Look at the stroke rates. They're all down in the low 30s, pulling at their ease, conserving their energy because they know they are pretty safe now, hoping to make that C final. Yeah, and, uh, and passing our commentary position, I saw a change of gear there from uh, Isabella Begley from the USA. She really, She's really going for it. She's uh, up the rate, 36 strokes a minute, as she races towards the line. It's pan-flat conditions here at Lago di Varese. You can't uh, wish a better venue uh, to race on. It's fabulous here. But uh, the American having the work to do with uh, Uruguay, Japan and Tunisia currently in the qualifying spots for the C final. Yeah, Sara Zamali of Tunisia might just be keeping a close eye on Isabella Begley, trying to extinguish that threat from her for that third qualification spot. But it's Yazon of Uruguay, Kawamura of Japan, Zamali of Tunisia currently in the qualification spots for the C final. Ovviamente la finale C è un'altra finale che va ad assegnare le posizioni dalla tredicesima in avanti, è una di quelle finali che può darti un'ulteriore occasione ma soprattutto una sorta di riscatto e lo sa bene l'Uruguay che insieme al Giappone e alla Tunisia stanno dimostrando di andare in gran parata verso il traguardo per mettere in sicurezza le prime tre posizioni, quelle valide per l'accesso in finale C e allora il Giappone c'è cerca di accorciare partita seconda, seconda per tutto il percorso alle spalle dell'Uruguay per la terza posizione, la Tunisia cerca di rimanere in contatto ed eccole qua in parata verso il traguardo. Doesn't look like there's any change here coming down to the finish. It looks like Uruguay is just going to hold out in front. That's uh, Nicole Yazon. She takes it down to the line. She's going to take it by about a length from an accelerating Kawamura of Japan in a second place. And third goes to Sara Zamali in the uh, fifth lane there for Tunisia. Great row, great race from all these athletes. Uruguay, Japan, Tunisia joined Denmark, Switzerland and Mexico in the C final of the lightweight women's single skulls. Onto the lightweight men's single skulls, working their way well down the course. It's Puerto Rico lane one, Spain in two, Brazil lane three, Italy lane four, Azerbaijan in lane five, Colleen. Yeah, it's a fantastic race developing and well into the third quarter, so we'll send it pretty quickly to the 1500. Uh, but the race that's developing, well, it's between Brazil, Italy, and Spain, three to advance on to final C. Azerbaijan would just barely be left out, but Tim, Italy putting their bow ahead. Yeah, I think uh, from uh, Emmanuel Bergamin in lane number four, he really wants to uh, impress here on uh, Lago di Varese. He is uh, trading punches, though, every single stroke with uh, Ferreira Batista from Brazil in lane number three. Those two crews equally matched as they come towards our position. And uh, Suna Tanko from Spain, not out of it yet. He's uh, currently sitting in third uh, with, uh, I think, uh, the Mamatsa from Azerbaijan in fourth and the uh, uh, scholar from Puerto Rico, uh, Miranda Arojo, uh, in uh, fifth position. So those two last crews have the work to do with three leaders from the center lanes. Incredible battle here between Brazil and Italy. Bow ball to bow ball. There is very little between them, inches, I would say. Boat speed is match one. Brazil, the scholar from Brazil, is rating at 30. The Italian scholar rating 34. So two different approaches. Tim, which do you think is better? Oh, uh, well, normally I would say a, a slightly lower rate of striking at this stage of the race gives you the flexibility to go up when you go for the, for the sprint. But uh, we saw, I think, in the juniors uh, men's single that if you row a really long and very 
power intensive uh, stroke it may say uh, it may drain the tank completely so you can't raise it to a sprint finish so you have to find that balance between rate and power um, currently I think these two athletes look great I think they both have another gear to go to if they need to but uh, yeah they're clear water ahead of Spain in third and then it's clear water back to Azerbaijan and uh, Puerto Rico so they don't really need to but I'd love them to see uh, to raise this to a sprint as to uh, just for the bragging rights here in the uh, CD semi-final of the under 23 lightweight men's single skulls Rob so from your position perhaps around the, uh, you can peek around that pillar uh, how is it looking uh, between Italy and Brazil <laughs> it's looking very much like a pillar but uh, no I can see them they haven't reached the pillar quite yet actually but uh, yeah those three still looking in contention and I don't think there's a real threat uh, perhaps not quite coming from Azerbaijan Brazil Italy Spain is how we saw it from here they now have gone behind the pillar and so I'm going to throw it to Luigi to see Luigi, Luca, Here to we go. see how he came. <laughs> it's getting late in the afternoon, Luca. I do apologize. <laughs> Il Brasile che continua a dominare lì davanti, un vantaggio davvero prezioso per il brasiliano, ma c'è l'Azzurro per la seconda posizione. Emanuele Bergamin sicuramente batte il forte il cuore a Torino, alla canottiera Isperia, e anche quello di Roberto Romanini che l'ha cresciuto durante tutto l'anno. Quindi Brasile, Italia e per la terza posizione all'esterno la Spagna. Thank you, Luca, my dear friend. It's uh, Brazil coming through to take first place very comfortably indeed by two and a half, maybe even uh, three lengths there ahead of uh, Bergamin of Italy. And that third spot, well, it's being challenged. It's being challenged. Uh, Spain's uh, Tanko Suno just uh, really easing up there, but uh, safe enough to assure himself of getting through to the C-Finals. So it is Brazil, Italy, Spain through to the C-Final of the lightweight men's single skulls. Right, let's see if I can make a mess of this. Only, only four crews to get through in CD semi-final two of the lightweight men's single skulls. Algeria lane one, Portugal lane two, Poland lane three, Israel lane four. Colleen. Mario, Luigi, uh, <laughs> Rob, Rob, thank you, thank you so much. No, we appreciate it. Yeah, we've got four boats, haven't we? And three in, uh, only three spots to advance on to that C final. It's a really good start to the race uh, for Jakub Bajcek of Poland out of lane three. He led to the 500 meter mark. These athletes now well into the second quarter of the race. Fourth is the only spot that you don't want to be in, and it's going to be an exciting one, at least at about 750, excuse me, at about halfway now. Uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty tightly packed for those top three spots. Al termine di questa gara andiamo a completare la griglia di partenza della finale C nella specialità del singolo pesi leggeri maschile che vede la Polonia allungare sempre di più al centro del percorso precedendo il Portogallo. Poi Israele e infine l'Algeria. Israele e Algeria che sono però vicinissime e una con l'altra giocano al gatto e la volpe. Andiamo a vedere sul traguardo chi riuscirà ad avere la meglio e chi invece si dovrà accontentare di presentarsi ai nastri di partenza per la finale D. Super impressed with Bujima from Algeria. That's Shames Adin Bujima out of lane one. Timmy's done a great job of really keeping in touch the whole way down. Yeah, and it's all about keeping your uh, chances and your hope alive uh, through the middle kilometer of the race. Uh, it's a fantastic job by Algeria's uh, Bujema uh, to stay into contact. And uh, yeah, if, you're, if you still have overlap with the uh, crews leading you, there is still a chance. You can hear them. You can see the wash coming down of the boats. You know you're close. And that may uh, motivate you to go all out and uh, sprint past them. Uh, but uh, at the moment, though, it is still still the uh, scholar from Poland, uh, Bajcek, uh, who is leading, uh, and he is at 35 strokes a minute. It's uh, that typical lightweight racing uh, we are seeing here from the Polish scholar in the center lane. Uh, but uh, Fidalgo from Portugal going with him, though, every stroke of the way. There's very little separating these two crews with, uh, the, uh, with Daniel Dubitsky from Israel currently in third and looking to his left, looking to uh, Bujema from Algeria, who is making a move, I think, Neve. He is three spots up for grabs so Israel and Algeria really putting in a great
great race here. Look at these now. They're just passing us on the tower. Poland still holding on to that first spot, but Portugal just one meter between those two boats now at the moment. As I said, Israel, Algeria, great battle here going on between them. A lot of experience in international races across the board um, in World Cups this season. So I think that experience is standing to them now. Yeah, that's definitely helping them. And uh, it's uh, always good to have uh, experience in a uh, well an, uh, the senior class and then uh, come back to the under tw 23s and uh, apply all the lessons learned from the uh, racing at senior level here at the under 23s. And uh, I think uh, it's still very tight. Uh, I think the, uh, the scholar from Algeria, Bujema, even uh, cl uh, closing up a little bit as they come towards the, two, the 150 to go. It is time to hand you back to Mario and Luigi in the finish tower. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Teddy. Okay, well, it is as you had it. Bicek, uh, Fidalgo, Dubritsky, uh, Poland... Portugal, Israel are in the pole position at the moment. But as you said there, Edward, uh, for Algeria, Bujema, he is not out of it quite yet. E ovviamente saranno gli ultimi 200 metri, quelli che andranno ad assegnare le posizioni che contano. Se da un lato la Polonia non vuole lasciare lo scettro, il Portogallo sta dimostrando di poter fare il colpo grosso. Ma attenzione perché all'esterno con un gran peccato scivola fuori l'Algeria che di fatto va a chiudere in quarta posizione e ne approfitta l'Israele per la terza. Well, what a finish we've got here. It's going to be Portugal's Fidalgo in first place, but the second place is snatched by Dubitsky of Israel. What a fabulous finish from Dubitsky. That is worthy of note. And I think third place was uh, from the pole, Bicek. And so that was a terrific finish. Let's just to confirm that uh, on the order here. It's Portugal, it's Israel, uh, it's Bicek of Poland. And then Bujema of Algeria in fourth. So Poland, sorry, Portugal, Israel, Poland, it's that time of day. Uh, we'll join Brazil, Italy and Spain in the sea final of the lightweight men's single skulls. First semi-final of the men's single skulls open weight. It's Finland, Chile, Tunisia, Uzbekistan, Norway and Israel. And we'll head straight across uh, to you, Colleen, to make a bit of sense of what's going on. <laughs> yeah, thanks very much. Well, I'm really impressed with the Chilean scholar, I have to say. Nahu Ferrando Reyes Zenteno, he's first to cross into the second half. Not quite yet, but he certainly has a clear water lead over the rest of the field. It's three to advance on to the C final. It's getting really hot up at the top. Uzbekistan keeping himself right in there as well. That's Mama Tukulov of Uzbekistan out of lane four. Closest in contention, uh, but still running fourth, well, that's Norway, uh, which means that Tunisia is holding on to third. So Norway, well, the Norwegian scholar Frederick Wright will have to make a push now. In corsia numero due sono i colori del Cile a brillare in questa prima semifinale C e D del singolo maschile under 23 con l'Uzbekistan a pannaggio della seconda posizione, poi in terza la Tunisia. Attenzione perché anche la Norvegia è lì pronta a rientrare a partire l'attacco per andare a recuperare le imbarcazioni di testa centrando la finale C. Più arretrate rimangono invece Finlandia ed Israele quando ormai mancano gli ultimi 800 metri del percorso. Bella l'azione dell'atleta cileno in corsia numero due con Uzbekistan e Tunisia per la terza. The biggest event of the regatta, the men's single skulls, the Chilean scholar Rea Centeno making his international debut. He's still leading at the 1500, is he, Tim? Yeah, I think he is, but uh, he's about to be overhauled, though, uh, by uh, Uzbekistan's uh, Mamad Kulov uh, in lane number four, uh, the big uh, Uzbekistanian there. You can see his tall figure uh, from our comedy <laughs> position. is really massive uh, rower. He's really tall. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm also impressed with the slightly more diminutive figure of uh, Ben uh, Hamouda from Tunisia, sandwiched in between uh, Chile's, uh, uh, the Chile Chilean scholar and... Uh, 
the Uzbekistan route. They're really making their way to the front of the field, uh, having one foot into that T final. Uh, but uh, it's uh, the crew from uh, Norway, uh, Frederick Wright, there. He's uh, clear water back to the leading 3 0. And re he really needs to, uh, to move uh, quickly now if he wants to get into the C final. He does, and I think he is starting to make that move. The rate is staying steady, but I, I'm sure we're going to see in the next few strokes he is going to up that rate. Currently, first place, Chile, she, he is holding on to that first place. Uzbekistan just a couple of metres behind. Tunisia sitting in third, Norway in fourth. As we said, the scholar from Norway, his speed has increased and he is heading for home. Yeah, heading for home and uh, heading towards the Red Boy area. He's, uh, the, he has the highest boat speed uh, of all the crews now, uh, only matched by uh, uh, Reyes uh, Zento, uh, Centeno from Chile. Uh, but uh, I don't think he's going to pose much of a threat to the leading crews from uh, Tunisia and Uzbekistan. Yeah, Chile, Uzbekistan, Tunisia at the moment. It's a brave effort from writer of Norway in lane five. We'll keep a very close eye on him for sure. E ovviamente, come diceva For Sure in questo momento, Rob, il Cile continua la sua marcia trionfale. Ma se da un lato il Cile ha dimostrato insieme all'Uzbekistan di poter andare a prendersi le due piazze, per la terza la Tunisia deve stringere forti i denti in questo momento. Ed eccole là comparire, quindi Cile, Uzbekistan, Tunisia. It's a great finish. We're getting lots of support here. These uh, scholars are looking very, very strong as well as they come down to the finish. And I think uh, we're going to get a great finish as well from Reston Nito of uh, Chile. He crosses the line in first place, uh, just uh, coming through in second. I think it was uh, Mamatulov of Uzbekistan. And they're very close indeed for third and fourth. I'll go with Ben Hamuda of Tunisia right now, but just waiting for confirmation of that. But what a closely fought race. A terrific finish from all the crews there. Chile in first. Uzbekistan second. Just waiting confirmation of Tunisia in third. And there it is. They're the three crews to the C final of the men's single skulls. Second semi-final is around 1,000 metres already. It's Latvia, it's Egypt, Uruguay, New Zealand and Slovenia for those three final C-final slots, Colleen. Yeah, it is. It's just three to move on to the C-final. And at the moment, the Slovenian scholar, Semen Kravchuk, uh, making the best of it out of lane five as they prepare to cross into the second half. Really tightly packed uh, up at the front, I'd say maybe with the exception of Muhammad of Egypt out of lane two, just slightly off the pace, but certainly still keeping in touch with this race. A sight to be seen. They're nearly level crossing through the halfway point. Una spinta in acqua decisa, quella dell'atleta sloveno in corsia numero 5, che è però tallonato dalla Nuova Zelanda e anche dall'Uruguay in questa seconda semifinale del singolo under 23 maschile. Tre imbarcazioni veramente molto vicine, ma con anche la Lettonia in corsia numero 1, che non vuole lasciare nulla di intentato con il giovane atleta lettone per la quarta posizione in questo momento. Scivola invece in quinta l'Egitto, che perde terreno nei confronti delle imbarcazioni di testa ma con la Slovenia al comando e l'Uruguay e la Nuova Zelanda in un bellissimo punta a punta al passaggio agli 800 metri del percorso poco dietro la Lettonia We have a race on our hands, that's for sure. Three athletes out ahead uh, but keeping an eye on Latvia, Ricard Standard still in contention, Tim Yeah, and it's uh, really difficult for the uh, three leading crews from uh, Uruguay, New Zealand and Slovenia to keep an eye on that uh, Latvian scholar in the uh, in lane number one all the, way, all the way on the far side of the lake. We can see him racing uh, now. He's uh, upped his game. He's 
36 strokes a minute and uh, he's trying to get uh, back uh, to the front of the field because he is currently in fourth and uh, that means he will be, if th uh, things remain as they are, uh, the first of this uh, repechage to go into the D final together with uh, the Egyptian scholar Muhammad in lane number two. But the three front runners uh, not easing off just yet. It's uh, still Garcia from Uruguay in the lead but uh, uh, um, uh, Kobe Miller from uh, Cambridge, New Zealand in the very distinctive black boat and black uh, rowing uh, uni suit uh, in uh, second position. But uh, Kravchuk from uh, Slovenia looks good. Is he making a move there, Neve, or uh, is he still in third position? He is actually currently in second place as he, they are passing us here at the 1500 meter mark. The scholar from Uruguay, Luciana Garcia, just hanging on to first place. The scholar from Slovenia, though, he is going for it. And then we, we have New Zealand in third. Great race between these three boats. Of course, three are going through to the C final. It looks like they are battling it out to get their, their names or their boats across the line first. Yeah, great to see. Uh, with uh, with three crews there leading clear water, It's uh, it doesn't seem like they're relaxing at all, uh, Rob. If anything, uh, a small burst there coming from Uruguay's scholar to get even uh, more in the lead than he is already. Yeah, it's impressive at this stage in the race in particular, isn't it, uh, Tim? Terrific performance from him and he's being very closely followed by Slovenia and New Zealand. Luciano Garcia, un solo uomo al comando, sta dimostrando davvero di poter andare ad esprimere tutta la sua potenza insieme alla Slovenia in acqua numero 5 per queste prime due posizioni straordinarie, poi ancora all'aggancio per la terza posizione, cerca di rientrare Miller, il neozelandese finito accidentalmente in questa semifinale C e D che di fatto sta cercando il gran riscatto it's Uruguay, it's Slovenia, it's New Zealand. That's how they are at the moment coming down to the finish line. Those three have been the, the prime contenders all the way down the course for these qualification spots. And I think you're right in what you were saying earlier of Garcia opening up his lead here. There he is, he goes across the line, uh, takes it by uh, a length and a half uh, ahead of uh, Kravchuk of Slovenia and uh, Miller of New Zealand coming home in third place. So those three crews will join Chile, Uzbekistan and Tunisia in the C final of the men's single skulls. The remaining crews will, of course, contest the D final. Oh, very apt music to introduce the women's single skulls CD semi final scouting for girls, top British band with their song She's So Lovely. But let's get back <laughs> to what's going on on the, on the lake here with the Philippines in lane one, Hungary in lane two, Mexico in lane three, Israel in lane four, 800 meters gone. Yeah, uh, it looks lovely, Rob, but uh, certainly these athletes are in tremendous pain. It's a, f a great, great effort to get down this 2,000-meter course. Up at the top of the field, looking to secure a place in the C final, it's Mexico. So Mexican fans take note. Mildred Belen, Bercados Palacios coming through at lane, out of lane three. Then just next to her, well, it's a sculler from Hungary, Yanka Sieros out of lane two, uh, running third because running second at the moment, well, it's the Philippines. That's Christine Parion, then back to Israel. Se pur sia solo una semifinale, per andare ad aggiudicarsi le prime tre posizioni e l'accesso alla finale C, è bello vedere come gli atleti non demordono mai. Qui sul campo di regata della Schiranna di Varese danno sempre il tutto e per tutto, tutte le nazioni in gara, soprattutto nella specialità del singolo Under 23 femminile, in cui vediamo l'atleta delle in corsia numero 3 del Messico condurre per la seconda posizione le Filippine, poi l'Ungheria perde terreno invece Israele che se non parte l'attacco immediatamente, attenzione in questo momento in Gavona al Remo sott'acqua purtroppo l'atleta di Israele accusa stanchezza, riparte in questo momento dopo la linea dei mille metri, quindi Filippine, Ungheria e Messico proiettate verso la finale C mentre Israele dovrà accontentarsi della finale D.
through halfway and we saw Yanka Sierros of Hungary just look over her left shoulder. She can feel Christine Parayon from the Philippines and wants to make sure that she can have her bow just on the right side of that. Tim, they're charging towards you. Israel just coming through the 750 to go and uh, the battle continues between Hungary and the Philippines. Yeah, it's a great little battle to watch here in the uh, semi-final for the C and D finals. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, really impressed by uh, uh, Mercado Pal uh, Palacios uh, from uh, Mexico. She's really taken the initiative here in the early stages and now she can uh, uh, reap the reward of her effort uh, because she is already at 39 uh, uh, 29 excuse me uh, strokes a minute uh, cruising the last bit of this uh, uh, semi-final home and she can take uh, a look back relax a bit uh, and uh, make sure when uh, the other two competitors from uh, the Philippines and uh, Hungary um, when they might get too close she can put on a bit of a burst and increase the distance uh, once again so uh, it's Mexico over Hungary and the Philippines uh, in uh, one two and three and it's clear water back to uh, Tayeb Haggerty from uh, Israel uh, who is uh, combining her uh, athletic career with a uh, mathematics and systems biology study so it's great to see her competing here uh, but uh, she is uh, uh, well. She's clear water back to the front three runners, so I don't think she's going to catch up. But uh, I think uh, the Mexican uh, scholar there, uh, taking a little look to her left and uh, looking towards uh, uh, Tiros from Hungary uh, and taking a bit of a burst just to get that clear water advantage, advantage once again. She is. I think she looked over. She saw the scholar from Hungary making a little burst herself. So now she is replicating that. She is still hanging on to that first place, though. She is quite comfortable, looking very, very relaxed here as she passed us. She is turning 22 on Saturday, and I'm sure she's hoping to make that C final now tomorrow. So she'll have something to celebrate tomorrow evening. Yeah, and what a place to celebrate that uh, birthday, to uh, be here in Italy uh, in the summer and to have uh, some quality racing before your birthday is ab an absolute treat. So uh, that's great uh, to see her here and uh, she will be contesting the sea final, no doubt. So uh, not much changing there, Rob, uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, you guys up in the tower can see them coming uh, your way with just over 300 meters left to go. Absolutely right, Tim, we can. And Mercado Palacios is looking in great shape to take this one, isn't she? But uh, there's still a really healthy challenge coming from Zeros of Hungary and uh, Parawan of the Philippines. Too much to do now, I think, possibly for Atayab Haggerty of Israel. But she's had a great regatta here. She is coming home in fourth. But uh, Mercado Palacios of Mexico leading the way home. Marcado Placido, lo avete sentito bene, questo atleta messicano, segnatevi il suo nome, ha dimostrato di saper gestire al meglio il suo percorso. Nei primi 500 metri con il tempo di 1.52.94 ha messo subito in chiaro le regole, ma in chiusura tutto può succedere perché l'Ungheria non ci vuole stare, non vuole lasciare spazio al messicano e allora si apre la battaglia, una lotta a due anche qui. Oh, there's a great duel going on here down towards the finish line between Hungary and Mexico. Which way is it going to go? I think Zeros of Hungary is just going to clinch this one. And she does. That's a great breakthrough for her. Taking it by a bow deck, if that, half a bow deck from Mercado Palacios of Mexico. But they're both through to that C final where they will be joined by the athlete coming through in lane one. That's Christine Parayon of the Philippines. Great racing, great quality. Hungary Mexico Philippines through to the C final of the women's single skulls and let's hear it for Tayeb Haggerty of Israel as she makes her way down uh, to complete her race she'll be in the D final Three boats contesting the second semi-final of the women's single skulls. They are Estonia, USA and Algeria, Colleen. Yeah, three boats contesting only two spots. All of these athletes now moving into the second half of the race, leading from the start, leading through the 1,000-meter mark. Well, that's Greta Janssen of Estonia. She rose at Princeton back in the States, uh, so great collegiate experience there. And her mother is both her coach uh, and a star athlete herself. In fact, she rode from Tallinn, Estonia to Helsinki, uh, and this was the first time uh, in history that that distance was passed in rowing uh, in a boat 
wrote by a woman. So she's definitely got great inspiration from her mother. At the moment, though, it's Estonia and the USA battling for first, Algeria running third. Prima di entrare nel vivo delle finali C, ultima semifinale del singolo femminile con Estonia e Stati Uniti a pannaggio delle prime due posizioni utili per il passaggio del turno in finale C. Peccato per l'Algeria che se vorrà entrare in finale C dovrà in questo momento partire l'attacco e andare al recupero delle imbarcazioni di testa. Ella Berry gets her bow ahead from the USA, ahead of the scholar from Estonia, Algeria running third. What a tussle team up at the front between the US and Estonia. They're really going uh, all the way down to the line. It's stroke for stroke, uh, matching uh, each other, well, not really matching each other in terms of rate of uh, strike, but uh, more or less equal in uh, the uh, speed department uh, with uh, the Estonia Greta Jansson uh, just underrating uh, her uh, American uh, competitor, Ellie Berry. Of uh, Ella Berry from Oyster Bay, New York. Uh, she rose at Princeton too, so uh, she's really experienced and uh, she's really, uh, well, well, easing it off slightly. I think there's a sort of agreement between the two of them with clear water back to uh, Manseri from Algeria that they don't gonna, that they're not really sprinting all the way down the line though. Uh, but I think the American just has the advantage by about a quarter of a canvas. I know you were saying that, Tim, but I still think it will come down to um, who can get that first place spot now. The first two are going through to the C final, but they haven't given up at all by any means. Ella Barry there from USA with a lovely stroke there as she passed us at the 1500 meter mark. Um, so I don't think they're just going to give up right right. No. Uh, you might be right, though. Uh, I, I thought, looking uh, out from our commentary position, that they were more or less equal, and they had a sort of uh, shared agreement between the two of them that they really weren't going to go into. Uh, they weren't going to race all the way down the line. But uh, yeah, sneaking into the lead, actually, it's uh, Ella Berry from the USA now almost half a length ahead of Greta Jansson from Estonia, with uh, Manseri of Algeria in third. Yeah, too much perhaps now for Manseri of Algeria to do if she's going to avoid contesting the D final. No disgrace in that at all, of course. But it looks like it's Estonia and the USA for this one with a little bit of distance yet to go. Ancora un po' di metri da percorrere, ancora un po' di metri che in singolo sembrano ancora di più ovviamente perché le velocità sono diverse, stiamo viaggiando a una media di 4 metri al secondo con 33 colpi al minuto la nostra americana Ella Berry continua lì davanti a dimostrare di poter maneggiare questo vantaggio con cura assoluta direi, un vantaggio importante per lei davanti all'Estonia poi l'Algeria per la terza posizione in una gara già scritta, una gara che permetterà di andare ad assegnare le due posizioni, i due pass per accesso in finale C, finale C che verrà conquistata da Stati Uniti ed Estonia, poi l'Algeria terza. Yes, Ella Barry has moved well through now for the USA. She's going to take first place quite comfortably. She's still opening up that lead over Greta Jansson of Estonia. It's Barry of the USA to cross the line in first place. Two and a quarter lengths ahead of Jansson of Estonia. Those are the two crews uh, who will go through to the C final where they'll meet Hungary, Mexico and the Philippines. And for Manseri of Algeria, who's just coming up to the line now, she'll be contesting the D final. So we now move on to our first final of this regatta. It's the C final in the women's double skulls for placings 13 through to 16. And racing here in lane one is Latvia, Chinese Taipei in lane two, Hungary in lane three, Egypt are in lane four. Colleen, there with you. Yeah, the Hungarian combination just looking absolutely fantastic as they cross through halfway. In fact, they're already looking for that uh, 750 to go meter mark. It's Luca Kaznatalia in the stroke seat for Hungary, Flora Gaskow in the bow seat. 
L'Ungheria continua la corsa verso il traguardo in questa prima finale C del nostro programma, quella riservata alla specialità del doppio Under 23 femminile. Insieme all'Ungheria abbiamo Taipei con Lettonia, mentre l'Egitto in quarta posizione. Andremo ad assegnare con questa prima finale C le posizioni dalla tredicesima alla sedicesima, quando ormai mancano gli ultimi 500 metri di gara. So Tim, they're moving towards you. We're in uh, the first final, it's a C final. It's the last race of the regatta for these athletes. I'm hoping we hear some noise from the grandstand up at the thousand. I have no doubt in my mind, uh, Colleen. Thank you so much uh, that uh, there is, uh, that, that there will be, uh, uh, that there won't be any sound. I think all these athletes will be cheered on all the way down the line. I can still see many people lining the banks here of Lago di Varese and uh, the first crew to be hearing the cheers will be the Hungarian uh, double with uh, from uh, Galsko and Kass. They are leading clear water over Latvia in second with Chinese Taipei, uh, Lo and Lin, uh, currently in the third spot and it's clear water back then to uh, Egypt but uh, let's take a moment to appreciate the rowing of the Hungarian athletes now passing our commentary position it's a nice springy rhythm 34 strokes a minute and uh, easily maintaining the highest boat speed but uh, yeah that's clear water and uh, I'll think, I think they're going to take this all in and really enjoy the views and the vistas whilst their legs and lungs must be hurting it's, it's, they've put in the effort but now they can enjoy the rest of the course down to the finish they are definitely hurting right now and even though they have such a lead they you can watch their boat speed there they are going up and they are going up their rate is going up they, this is their last race of the regatta so they want to finish it in style incredible rowing here by the hungarian scholars Yeah, they're doing fabulous out there, uh, stepping it up to 35 strokes a minute. And uh, I think they uh, want to put on a show, especially for you two guys at the finish. This must be uh, for you, Rob and Luca, uh, all the way to the line. I think it's more for the people in the grandstand and their supporters and families who will be thrilled to see the sort of progress they're making here. Fabulous uh, performance from the Hungarian crew, as you say. Un vantaggio che l'Ungheria si è conquistato coi denti, un vantaggio che ora supera i 10 secondi davanti alla Lettonia, poi Taipei e a seguire l'Egitto. Sono queste le posizioni che continuano a rimanere invariate, decise rispetto al resto della corsa. L'Ungheria di fatto dimostra di avere le qualità per poter ambire ancora più in grande, lo sta facendo benissimo alla schiranna di Varese, un'Ungheria proiettata sicuramente in questa prova ma soprattutto con in gran riscatto verso il traguardo still a little way to go as a camera drone flies over the course maybe just getting some pictures as these uh, scholars come down to uh, reach the finish line for their final positions in this regatta it's Hungary utterly dominant in this competition well done to them they will claim 13th place overall they've won the C final here of the women's double skulls it's uh, clear water all the way back to second place Latvia that's 14th for them overall then uh, further clear water back to Chinese Taipei, and then Egypt coming home in fourth place. It's Hungary, Latvia, Chinese Taipei, and Egypt. Sea final of the men's double skulls, Chinese Taipei lane one, Norway in two, Greece in lane three, Canada lane four, the USA alongside you in lane five, Colleen. Yeah, it's an exciting view here from the thousand just about to cross into the second half. It's the Canadians, 37 strokes per minute, moving at an identical speed to the Americans. Uh, the bow seat in the Americans shell, Thomas Foltz keeping in really good touch with the Canadians. He knows that that's the crew that they'll need to overpass to win this C final. Closest to them then in third, it's the combination from Greek. So it's Fautis and Kapagailu. Ancora 800 i metri da percorrere per gli atleti impegnati nella finale C del doppio under 23 maschile. Un'ultima possibilità per questi atleti di dimostrare di poter dire la loro sul campo di regata della schiranna di Varese. È il Canada a condurre, seguito dagli Stati Uniti d'America, poi per la terza posizione la Grecia. Grecia che detiene il titolo mondiale in questa specialità. Poi la Norvegia per la quarta posizione e infine Taipei che è sì ultimo ma a bordo 
Bordo, l'atleta più giovane al via in questa specialità. Canada continuing to hold its Andrew Hubbard in the stroke seat, Michael Cipiela in the bow seat. They've led the entire way down. It's looking really good through the third quarter. I think the question then, Tim, is can will it be the Americans or the Greeks? It's looking like the Greeks. Yeah, the Greeks have the higher boat speed uh, with uh, a little over a quarter of this r race remaining. Uh, but I'm really impressed by the Canadian crew there, Colleen. They're, they look fabulous. It's nicely together. They really leave the boat past the oars very uh, impressively. Uh, but uh, going with them, it's still the USA. Uh, Thomas and Fultz there in uh, lane number uh, five, very close to our common two position, just a length behind. But the Greeks currently in uh, second position here in the C final of the men's double. Uh, Canada leading the way home, though, uh, with uh, three quarters of length over Greece. Uh, and then it's uh, America just a meter behind the Greeks. 500 meters to go. That Canadian crew looking so smooth. They have upped their rate. They're already up at a stroke rate, 37, 38. They are still the fastest boat. They are going for that first place in that C final. Very close, though, between Greece and USA. Great battle between the two of these. 38 strokes a minute there by USA. I'm not sure who's going to get this. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I think the Greeks, uh, uh, well, they impressed me with their sprint finish uh, in the uh, in the heats uh, earlier this uh, regatta. But, uh, yeah, I think the Greeks just a couple of meters ahead of the USA, though. And the USA uh, all, also now at 38 strokes a minute, really stepping up. But who are the, the other crew stepping up now? It's Canada. They, they've done enough. They are almost a length clear, uh, Rob. But the Canadians move out to even further. And there's terrific support as well coming from the grandstand for these crews. Canada, Greece, USA, Norway, Chinese Taipei. Sentite il tifo Canada che infiamma la schirana di Varese, il Canada che continua a dominare davanti alla Grecia, all'esterno gli Stati Uniti d'America provano a rinvenire quando si dice che il tifo fa la differenza, cerca di attaccare anche la Norvegia in una marcia trionfale verso il traguardo, Canada è solitario al comando. Yeah, I don't know what that means, it sounds great though. Canada are leading the way home, they're going to take it I think by about half half a length from the crew alongside them from Greece who've managed a superb challenge it's Greece in second place and third place just snatched by Norway ahead uh, of the USA in lane five back in uh, fourth what a superb race absolutely uh, exemplary uh, performance from all these crews here Chinese Taipei making their way down to the finish line in lane one let's have a great cheer for them please uh, ladies and gentlemen in the stand but it's Canada Greece Norway, USA, Chinese Taipei, the one, two, three, four, five in the C final of the men's double skulls. The C final of the men's quad skulls is underway. It's Mexico, Australia, Romania, and Ukraine contesting this one, Colleen. Yeah, Aussies are leading, uh, but I'm keeping an eye on this Ukrainian combination. Was delighted to see them at the second World Cup in Poznan, where I had the privilege to commentate on this combination that finished 12th overall in the men's quad, so racing at the senior level. They're back at the U23s, stroked by Badislav Lohman, Jan Kamanov in the three-seat, Massimilian uh, Malshev in the two-seat, and Alexander uh, Melashenko in the bow-seat, keeping really in close touch with the Aussies. Uh, Romania and Ukraine nearly tied then back to Mexico. Finale C del quadruplo maschile che vede impegnate Messico, Australia, Romania e Ucraina sul campo di gara della Schiranna per la disputa della loro ultima prova ai mondiali del 2022. Vedremo chi sul traguardo sarà capace di andare alla conquista della tredicesima posizione ma al passaggio agli ultimi 800 metri del percorso sembra proprio essere l'Australia in testa per la seconda posizione la Romania in terza l'Ucraina mentre a circa 30 metri di distanza l'equipaggio del Messico. Marcus Della Marta, the stroke seed of the Aussie crew, kicks it up to 38 strokes per minute. Tim, Ukraine at a cool 35. 
Yeah, the Ukrainian crew just uh, half length back uh, though, so I think the Ukrainians uh, uh, will need to start sprinting really soon because there is, uh, well, a bit over a quarter of this race still left. Uh, and uh, looking out, it's uh, Aust uh, it's uh, Australia uh, yeah, looking in control. I think they're even moving out slightly, going with them though. Romania looking impressive too uh, in second position. What a sight the, to see the quads coming down the course here towards us at the 1500 meter mark. The Aussies holding on to that lead, followed by Romania. Romania there, their boat speed is that slight bit higher though, so it um, it is all to play for as they come into their last 500 metres, all looking very smooth there now. The Ukraine crew as well, pulling very well, and then back to Mexico over on the far side. Final C here, last race of the regatta for these crews. Very close at the moment. Who do you think is going to go to Tim? I think Australia look uh, good uh, to me and I think they have that little bit of home water advantage with the Australian team training here, albeit on the other side of the lake. But uh, they have to keep their, their eye out uh, to the crew from Romania with the European champion in the uh, uh, under-19 men's eight, uh, Stera there, in the bow seat. He is really uh, close to the uh, uh, Australians though uh, and uh, I think the Australians already had 40 strokes a minute so I expect the Romanians to raise it and uh, try to get past the Australians there, Rob. Yeah, uh, Luca nodding in agreement with uh, your assessment of uh, Australia and uh, the nature of the fact that they train on this wonderful lake here. It's uh, helping them down towards the finish line for sure. Vedremo se li aiuterà, sicuramente cercano di mettere le ali insieme all'Ucraina e alla Romania, tre nazioni in un fazzoletto, tre nazioni che vogliono andare a conquistare la prima piazza in questa finale C, la finale del riscatto all'esterno c'è l'Australia con la Romania che attacca, guardate in fuori giri, ancora in aggancio ma l'Australia è lì davanti. Oh, it's a really great sight, this finish, because all three crews in contention are really going for it. Australia are going to just hold on. They're going to take it by three quarters of a length ahead of Romania, who take it by half a length uh, from Ukraine, with Mexico coming home in fourth. It's Australia in first, Romania in second, Ukraine third, Mexico fourth. So to our last C final of today, and it's Japan in lane one, Italy in lane two, Bulgaria in lane three, and lane four, Austria. Abbiamo l'ultima regata del nostro programma odierno, la finale C del 2 senza maschile e ricompaiono i colori azzurri perché in corsi a due ci sono Simone Mantegazza e Simone Fasoli. There are some people sitting not a million miles away from me, Colleen, who suggest that as it's the last race of the day, it might be quite nice to see an Italian victory. It might be quite nice, wouldn't it? And Tomas was just telling me a story that I've asked him to tell you all. It's fantastic. Tomas, what can you say about this combination from Italy? Abbiamo Simone Mantegazza e Simone Fasoli, atleti dell'Italia in forza al club Moto Guzzi, con il loro allenatore Giuseppe Moioli, nato nel 1927, che li segue su tutti i campi di regata. Sicuramente anche in questo caso sarà lì a sostenere i suoi atleti. Simone Mantegazza e Simone Fasoli impegnati in questa finale C del 2 senza maschile. Giuseppe Moioli che fu già oro nel 4 senza, pensate ai giochi olimpici, di Londra nel 1948. L'Italia c'è ancora una volta ma a condurre la testa del gruppo è la Bulgaria per la seconda posizione l'Italia proprio in terza il Giappone insieme all'Australia. And Tomas would you mind telling our English speaking friends just about the club? I'm not good uh, to speak English <laughs> but uh, we have uh, Giuseppe Moioli that is uh, the trainer of Simone Mantegazza, Simone Fasoli, that was born in 1927. 1927, so an absolute legend. And Tomas, thank you. That was perfect English, and we all really appreciate it. It's the stories that bring these races to life. And the story of this race, well, it's Bulgaria all day, up at the top of the field. Ivan Yankulov in the stroke seat. Svetomir Malinov in the bow seat. They're holding a really great rhythm as they move through the halfway point along 33 looking to end their regatta in style. 
Una bellissima regata da parte della Bulgaria che continua la sua corsa verso il traguardo in questa finale C del 2 senza under 23 maschile con gli azzurri in seconda posizione pronti ad andare alla conquista della quattordicesima posizione in questa specialità con Austria e poi il Giappone che lottano per la terza posizione sul traguardo. They're coming towards you Tim, Bulgaria leading, will we get an Italian cheer from the grandstand? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I have no doubt uh, the Italians will be up and uh, cheering on their uh, uh, their men's pair at the under 23s here. Uh, in uh, it's uh, Mantagazza and uh, Fasoli uh, still in second position. Uh, it's still they have contact with the leading Bulgarian crew who are really show giving a, uh, a great demonstration of power rowing. It's a uh, low rate of striking, 33 strokes a minute, and uh, compare that to the Italian uh, crew to their left. Uh, who were uh, lightweight rowers in uh, the uh, previous years. Um, the Italians overrating them uh, at 38 strokes a minute. So a very uh, nice comparison there between two styles. It's power versus rate of striking, but the Bulgarians uh, yeah, laying down the watts and they are still in the lead by about a length over Italy. Look how smooth they look as they are coming up towards us here at the 1500 meter mark. Youngest crew out there on the water, 18 and 19, both scholars there, but they are just rowing at their ease, still hanging on to that 32 strokes a minute. But the boat speed is the Italians who have upped it. They're rating at 38 strokes a minute. They are looking over their shoulders and they are the ones that are hoping that that boat speed will take them to that finish line. Yeah, and they're closing the distance, as you say, uh, Niamh. It's uh, just seven meters separating Bulgaria and Italy. And a big cheer from the Italian home fans might propel these uh, Aturi all the way across the line and perhaps even past Bulgaria, who are still at 33 strokes a minute. Italy upping it almost 40 strokes a minute now. It's going to go down to the wire. It's fantastic to see the Italians race. Rob, I'll leave it to you and uh, Luca to call it down the line. Thank you very much, Tim, and thanks to Neve and to Colleen and to Thomas for some uh, wonderful commentary again today, and from Andrea, who we heard from earlier. But yeah, what a great way to finish the day's racing. The sun has come out to greet uh, our finalists here, as well as they come down the course. Bulgaria, Italy, Japan and Austria, they deserve a huge cheer, but who's going to cross the line in first place? In fondo a questa gara si tira il sipario su questa quarta giornata del campionato del mondo a Varese. Attenzione perché a tirare sipario potrebbe essere l'Italia oppure la Bulgaria. Bulgaria capace di dominare il percorso di questa finale cima. Gli azzurri non ci stanno, accorcia la palata. Simone Fasoli supportato da Simone Mantegazza, entrambe classe 2001, che provano a rientrare sulla Bulgaria per la finale del riscatto. Ed ora gli azzurri devono crederci se volessero ancora tentare il colpaccio <laughs> Carpaccio I had some of that for lunch and here they come then it's Italy on the way down to the finish line they're going to take first place just by oh it's absolutely dead heat I think it will be a photo finish for first and second between Italy and Bulgaria what an absolutely amazing finish to see in this last race of the day coming home to take third place uh, is Japan in lane one and then in fourth place it's Austria in uh, lane four but let's just see how the official standing has it it's just given it to Bulgaria they've snatched first place ahead of the Italians in second and then it's Japan in third Austria in fourth these are for places 13 through to 16 overall in the under 23 men's bet thank you to all of you for a wonderful race to finish our day here today grazie ragazzi grazie di cuore per averci regalato una finale mozzafiato siamo insieme da questa mattina alle 9 ma alla fine in chiusura di giornata ci avete regalato un foto finish che ricorderemo per sempre purtroppo ovviamente per soli tre centesimi di secondo il foto finish fa quasi paura vittoria della bulgaria secondo posto l'italia terzo il giappone And thank you to Thomas for his wonderful story about Giuseppe Morioli. And uh, in fact, uh, Luca was just uh, filming in on, on a little bit more, which uh, Thomas may well have mentioned when he was uh, telling the story in Italian, that uh, Giuseppe, uh, born in 1927, same age as my dear mother, and, uh, and the uh, clubhouse here, but he won gold in London at the 1948 Olympics and actually was invited back to London in 2012. And he came to Eaton Dorney, where many of us were, were lucky enough to be. 
So I, it is just a wonderful story. And Thomas, thank you so much for, for telling us that today. A lovely finish to the day here. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for coming to lend us your support here today, and not least to the crews who have competed just so valiantly throughout the day in the under-19s this morning, the under-23s this afternoon. We must also uh, pay tribute to our wonderful volunteers, without whom this sort of event cannot happen, let alone to the degree of success that we have here, and to the officials as well who make sure that everything runs smoothly. I've thanked our commentators. I'd also like to thank my my dear friend up in the tower here, who I occasionally call Luigi, but he is, of course, Luca Bragini, and many of you will know him. He's an absolute star of Italian rowing. Uh, just before I hand over to Luca, a reminder that the schedule has been changed for tomorrow uh, because of the threat of thunderstorms later in the day. So uh, racing will take place uh, earlier in the day. The afternoon races have been moved to the morning, but uh, racing gets underway as normal at uh, 9 o'clock with the reps in the under-19s. We'll be moving through through to the AB semi-finals of the under-23 women's single skulls and the men's uh, later in the morning from 10.25. And the A finals uh, in the under-23s will get underway at 10.50. So uh, racing will end tomorrow uh, shortly after 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, because that is when we expect the weather to turn a little bit nasty. But uh, all being well, we'll get our schedule back on track by the end of tomorrow and uh, all should be looking good. Before I move on into Italian, let me thank yes. this big, this <laughs> big friend uh, that's sharing with me the tower, uh, this 2022 World Champ, uh, with a wonderful pleasure today. We really enjoyed the day, so thank you very much, Rob Curling. <laughs> Great pleasure, Luca, thank you. Dicevamo un, uh, una finale chiusa nel migliore dei modi ma che ci permette di lanciare il programma di domani che vi ricordo è stato rivisitato per evitare di incorrere in problemi e quindi questo fattore temporale che purtroppo sta uh, attanagliando il mondiale. Domani il temporale sembra annunciato e confermato quindi è stato rimodulato il programma per la sicurezza di tutti gli atleti e delle 62 nazioni partecipanti quindi si partirà alle 9.00 con i recuperi under 19 per proseguire con le finali A a partire dalle 10.50 dalle 10.50 alle 12.45 quindi il blocco delle finali mondiali poi a seguire finali B, C e D a proseguire grazie per essere stati con noi alla Schirana di Varese a questo campionato del mondo è stato un immenso piacere accompagnarvi anche in questa giornata arrivederci a domani